Again, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get our program underway. We hope you enjoyed dinner. Please uh, help me in thanking the Washburn Chartwell staff for our dinner here tonight. Thank you so much. We'd like to recognize uh, former Hall of Famers who are in attendance with us. Uh, so if you would stand, we'll hold our applause until they've all stood and uh, welcome them all at one time. From 2006, Ken Berry. From 2008, Dale Cushenberry. From 2010, Joe Schrag. From 2012, Nadira Hazim Patrick and James Patrick. From 2013, Ben Meske. From 2015, Ken Darting. From 2015, Bill McDonald. From 2017, Mark Elliott. From 2019, Ron Bowen. From 2019, Teresa Nicolay. And from 2021, Kyle McNorton. Please help and welcome our Hall of Famers who are with us tonight. We're going to kick off tonight with our first Hall of Famer, and this has been a long time in coming. We are so glad that Chris Barnes did not have a conflict for tonight, because about every other time we've asked him to be here, he's been engaged in his job. Uh, but tonight, he is here to be recognized as the Topeka Shawnee County Hall of Famer. Tonight, to introduce him is somebody that knows him fairly well, and is fairly accomplished in her own right. His wife, Linda. Linda has been on the USA team 12 times. She was a four-time collegiate All-American. Chris says she's in way more Hall of Fames than me. In fact, we're welcoming the first woman to ever beat a male professional on national TV. She beat Sean Rash in the Clash of Champions on CBS television. To welcome our first Hall of Famer, Chris Barnes, please welcome Linda Barnes. Well, now I'm nervous. That was a, quite an introduction. Thank you very much. Um, when I asked about the uh, protocol for introductions for tonight, I was told I could do whatever I wanted. So here goes. <laughs> Don't worry, Chris. I got gotcha. you. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed athletes, sponsors, guests, and fellow Topeka County Hall of Famers. Oh, and so I don't get in trouble, I need to introduce my mother-in-law, Joy, my nephew, Cody, and my brother-in-law, Ray. I'm out of trouble, right? I'm good. Okay. I'd like to share, um, first off, I have the pleasure of introducing the one and only, my husband, the professional bowler, Chris Barnes. Now, before I go any further, get that image out of your mind, the Fred Flintstone bowler, the towel in the back pocket, the beer drinking. This is, uh, he, he's way more than that. So Chris grew up in Topeka, and as with many young boys, he and his dad were inseparable. They participated in many sports together, baseball, basketball, and bowling, to name a few. His dad was the coach, the one that showed sportsmanship, and the man that to this day motivates Chris to conquer all activities. I never had the pleasure to meet Phil Barnes, but the light I see in Chris's eyes, sorry, when he talks about him tells me more than I need to know. I know that his dad is so proud of the man Chris has become. Chris was a member of the Topeka High School class of 1988. He played an integral part of the Trojans' 1986 state basketball championship team. Basketball has always been Chris's first love, and this state title may truly be one of Chris's most memorable moments. I know many of you know the name Coach Willie Nicklin. He was one of Chris's biggest influences. When Chris speaks of Coach, he does so with the utmost respect and maybe even a little fear. Coach Nicklin helped further Chris's winning mentality and respect for the game of basketball on the court, but more importantly, he taught Chris how to win in the game of life. Ask Chris about the time his hair was too long and Coach met him sit on the bench until he got it cut. He still shakes his head, and when he talks about it, but he always admits that Chris did, Coach did the right thing. Did I mention him? He taught him about winning in the life game of life. During his time at Topeka High, Chris lettered in four sports, football, basketball, track, and golf. I must admit I've always been a little jealous of his ability to conquer any sport. He even beats our kids in pop darts when we play at home. 
Anyway, after high school, Chris's journey led him to be a walk-on to the Wichita State University bowling team. After not making the A team or the B team his first year, Chris put all his focus into being the best on the lanes he could be. He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Business Management, and to no one's surprise, by the end of his four years, he had achieved All-American status and Player of the Year award. Chris then went on to the professional amateur world, winning many of the high roller sweepers, international events, and weekend tournaments. Chris quickly earned the reputation of being one of the fiercest competitors on the lanes. Next came the professional tour. To date, he now has an impressive collection of 19 PBA tour titles and four PBA 50 titles, otherwise known as the senior tour. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Under his belt. His total prize money earnings of over 2.4 million in the United States alone speaks volumes about his talent and dedication. He achieved the remar remarkable mil milestone of earning at least $100,000 in 14 PBA seasons, including an incredible streak of 12 consecutive seasons. Now, if you know anything about the prize fund for the PBA, that's quite an accomplishment. Chris was named PBA Rookie of the Year in 1998 and then PBA Player of the Year in 2007-2008. Only three others have ever accomplished both of these esteemed titles. Chris is also one of only eight players in PBA history to earn the Triple Crown. This is accomplished by winning the U.S. Open, the PBA World Championship, and the PBA Tournament of Champions. He's a member of the PBA Hall of Fame and the United States Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. And we aren't done. Sorry, I'm first. <laughs> Chris was also a 16-time team member of Team USA, and he was the captain of the U.S. team in the Weber Cup. He earned the name, uh, the, the nickname Captain America, and as you know, there's no capes for him because they get stuck in ball returns, so no capes for Chris. <laughs> Chris also competed with Senior Team USA in the World Championships. Again, that's Senior Team USA. So, yeah. And the thing you really want to know, how many perfect 300 games does Chris have? That's everybody's question, right? Well, the answer to date, he has 55 perfect 300s in PBA competition, but he has over 150 in other, and we've lost count, but we'll give or take 150 in other competitions and leagues and tournaments. So, uh, Chris is also a true ambassador for the sport he loves. His commitment to giving back to the commu community is truly commendable. When asked, he quickly donated to Topeka High to help provide athletes with new lockers. I think he would have provided a whole gym if we could have, but I had to remind them that um, we're bowlers, not golfers. So, lockers it was. Chris developed the Barnes Thanksgiving Classic Bowling Scholarship Tournament in 2005. To date, this tournament has given out over $400,000 in scholarship money to up and coming youth players. Together, we started the Strikeout Diabetes Charity Bowling Event. This is close to our heart as our kiddo, is, uh, our kiddo Troy is type 1 diabetic. This event raised over $500,000 in five years to help support the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation to uh, find a cure. And during COVID, Chris helped develop the Beef and Barnsey podcast. This show continues to air on Tuesdays and Thursdays on YouTube and Facebook. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And sorry, that's just habit. Um, this show was designed to educate and provide conversation on bowling topics, well, mostly bowling topics. You can often hear Chris's peers refer to him as the professor because of his in-depth knowledge on the sport. Every now and then when he isn't bowling on the show, you can hear his voice doing the commentating. He truly can do it all. With all this, perhaps Chris's proudest accomplishment and the one I have the most fun watching is his role as dad. Our twin boys, Ryan and Troy, were born in 2002. Ryan was, has followed in his dad's footsteps at, as a shocker player at Wichita State. Troy has pursued his passion for music at Stephen F. Austin. Since Chris is known to sing in an amazing Kermit the Frog voice, and I can't carry a note to save my life, Troy obviously inherited his musical talent from Grammy Joy. I know we can't wait to say what, see what these two accomplish in the future. So I've spent more than my available five minutes sharing stats and building up Chris's ego. <laughs> I really need to stop. <laughs> I couldn't be prouder of the person, bowler, husband, father, and now Shawnee County Hall of Famer than I am of you today. Chris, as our boys would say, you are him. Let us give him a round of applause. Chris Barnes.
Well, I don't have anything else left to say, I guess. Um, uh, the real reason, uh, well, I, first of all, I'm glad you got to meet the Better Barnes, as uh, my friends are not hesitant to call her, uh, ever. And uh, now that my son is uh, is doing well at Wichita State, now I'm, I'm third in the family. So uh, we're down to that as well. Uh, but the real reason I had her introduce me uh, is that any of you have been married for a long time. I just wanted to hear her say something nice about me <laughs> for a little while. So, uh, <laughs> I'm a big believer of uh, product and environment. As you can tell, I'm a pretty lucky guy. Uh, having someone who understands exactly the trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, uh, who can coach me, assist, and understands all of it is... Uh, is truly invaluable and, and it's uh, in integral to any success that I've had. And uh, it's truly a team and it does take a village. Uh, at this point, I would like to congratulate my fellow inductees, fellow Troy alum, uh, Crystal. Uh, it's been great watching and uh, catching up on some of your highlights along the way. Um, uh, Coach Bordewick, that's, a, that's quite a, an impressive resume. And uh, uh, as anyone who's coached, uh, uh, any sports, but particularly female sports, can understand how <coughs> difficult that uh, challenge may have been over time. Uh, it, but I'd really like, on a personal note, to give thanks to Rick Peterson for all the stories he's written on bowling. It, it's not always easy to get articles through about anything not related to that has something to do with our favorite athlete and what uh, what controversy might be going on there in, in the big four sports. So I appreciate the work Rick has done, not just for bowling, but for all the second and third tier sports. And uh, truly congratulate him on his award tonight and thank him for everything he's done uh, for many of us in, the, in this room. Uh, in addition to my lovely life, I'm lucky to be joined by my mother, Joy, uh, my late sister's husband, Ray, and their son, Cody. Cody. Uh, Gloria unfortunately succumbed to cancer two years ago. Uh, as Linda said, my twin 21-year-old boys are not able to join. Uh, the one is at uh, the U21 Team USA camp right now, trying to earn his way onto the Pan American team. And uh, his brother, uh, who is off right now but has a job and opted to stay there, is currently being written out of the will. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's a, it, it turns out money's more important to him right now. Uh, so I do think choosing your environment environment's pretty crucial to success, but when you're young, you don't really have much of a say about that. And I was lucky to grow up in a city that had set a, such a great atmosphere. Uh, right here on my doorstep, we had professional bowlers like Kelly Kaufman and Bill Busby that were on tour already. We had Dale Ewer, uh, who had represented Team USA at the World Cup. But most of all, we had Siemens' own Bob Bunoit uh, he was winning titles, shot one of the most famous 300 games in the history of ABC television, and beat one of the legends of the game at the same time, winning an incredible 130,000 in one day. Uh, those examples were instrumental and inspirational beyond uh, any measure I, I could say. Uh, but certainly the most important environment was my mom and dad. Uh, as Lynn said, my dad had taught me sports at a young age and gave me such a head start. It was infectious. He took me bowling at the age of six, my first league at seven. He coached every sport that I was in. Uh, he was a best friend. And, uh, and certainly uh, the reason I'm so passionate about sports to begin with. Um, you know, I got to watch him bowl as only 300 in a family twosome. And uh, I did forgive him because it was with my sister instead of me. But. Uh, Later on, uh, my sister did shoot her own 300, and, and uh, as far as I know, we were the first brother or sister to ever shoot 300 on the same day. So uh, it was a, his legacy carried on that way as well. Uh, he inspired me, taught me, coached me, and led by example. As a matter of fact, the Sportsmanship Award at Ken Berry, the, the, the fields that uh, were named after one of our legendary Hall of Fame inductees here, uh, it was named after him to recognize the impact that he had on the teams he coached. Uh, and it also goes to show that not all, everything that he taught me carried over. Uh, I don't have a lot of sportsmanship awards in my bank. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but like a lot of people that are pretty good at something, adversity seems to play a role. And for me, that was, that was a house fire shortly after my, my 11th birthday, or certainly before my 11th birthday. 
When my dad died in that fire trying to get back to the basement to get me out, I got a real life lesson in that adversity. I don't think I realized until way later how much my mother's strength in the face of that tragedy shaped how I would react to the difficult times in my career. She took on head of household, uh, a funeral, being the main breadwinner, rebuilding of a house and keeping my sister and I on track literally overnight. Her strength, guidance, and unconditional love and support, uh, even when I didn't deserve it, uh, had a huge impact. She went back to work full time. Looking back, we had just enough to get by, but I never did really know that. I always had a pair of shoes. I had a, a, a pair of jeans with no holes and I had supper. And uh, we never went without. Um, so my environment could have, been, could have collapsed certainly, but she held strong and showed me a path e even when I wasn't looking for it and uh, certainly wasn't listening for it. Uh, so there are a lot of reactions to all emotions and losing your best friend and dad. Uh, my outlet was sports. Uh, when I played, I could forget about the hurt and the, and the winds made it go away for a while. The sound of a swish of a net, uh, the sound of crashing pins, uh, the feel of a perfectly hit baseball or golf ball, those are the things that uh, became my obsession. So one of the things that I'm asked most about is though, is uh, how do you become a professional baller? And uh, coming back to this campus, um, you know, there isn't really one simple answer. Uh, I'm reminded of someone, though, that was on this campus for a long time that had direct impact on that. Coach Chipman is one of those guys. And you might ask how a college basketball coach could impact that. Well, I attended many of his summer camps, and, uh, you know, I was really, really quick at that figure eight drill that we used to do. Um, so I had a pretty good run uh, at Topeka High, and I dreamed of playing college basketball. And, uh, you know, played in a few All-Star games, including one here at Lee Arena. Uh, but then uh, on, a, on a visit here, I got a polite thank you, but no thank you from Coach Chipman. And, uh, you know, my favorite coach told me at that point it, it really wasn't going to be the right fit for me. Uh, but a little honesty goes a long way. I owe Coach Chipman a great debt of gratitude for not letting me sit on his bench for four years. Uh, sometimes the things that seem crushing aren't actually an end, uh, but an opportunity to get on the right path. And so for me, that's one way to become a professional bowler. Despite being the fifth or best, sixth best bowler in Kansas, I lucked my way into being the state representative at the national finals my senior year in high school. Uh, I could do math and didn't figure that made me much of a threat there, but uh, I realized as I got there that all five of the guys back at home were better than anyone that I'd seen there. Uh, and after not a great performance, but a fifth place finish at Nationals, I decided to uh, follow uh, one of my friends here from Shining Heights, Dan Dick. He had gone to Wichita State and, and the best bowling program in the nation and thought that could be a possibility. So I've spoken of this before, but a really specific, uh, Shawnee County Hall of Famer had a tremendous impact on me through high school, Coach Nicklin. And for those of you that do know him, it was nearly impossible to not be impacted by him and, and certainly impossible not to hear him when he wanted your attention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started with me early. Uh, it was my third practice up on the JV varsity and he broke two clipboards and threw a chair to half court. This was in practice and this was several years before Bobby Knight did it on TV. We were still three weeks from the first game of the season. I was terrified. I had to run the stairs, those big giant bleachers at the dungeon because I couldn't keep the ball still while he was talking. I got learned early on discipline uh, and, and it carried over for a long time after that. Uh, for those of you that refereed his games, I do have some empathy. Uh, our experiences probably have a lot of similarities. Uh, probably about the same amount of yelling, and don't worry, he couldn't remember my name when he was ranting either. Uh, but in the end, the, uh, the result was probably more positive on me than it was on the officials. Uh, you know, his old, old school approach is really exactly what an angry at life teenager needed. Uh, he showed me discipline, dedication, work ethic, and probably most important at all, uh, accountability. He taught me the talent wasn't enough, and as a matter of fact, that when chaos and stress was in play, the prepared were way more likely to come out on top than just the talented. So once my collegiate and Team USA days were over, I joined the tour, 
And at that point, yet another speaking came in my life. Rick Benoit, uh, Bob's brother, was a tour rep for the same company I was sponsored by at the time, and we developed a friendship that turned into a countless hours of strategizing. We looked at the best players, saw what they were doing better, and we figured out a way to uh, try and compete with them and try and, and try and beat them. And within a few years, he had me not only uh, competing alongside them, but, uh, but coming out victorious every once in a while uh, against those very players I had idolized on TV not so long before. So I've been fortunate to be a benefactor of a lot of great coaching, starting with my father, Wayne Sanders at Meadow Lanes, uh, Coach Nicklin, Coach Vatican at Wichita State, Team USA coaches, Rick Benoit, and now Mark Baker, the, the Butch Harmon of bowling. The, uh, I've had access to some of the great minds to be found, and like I said, it takes a village. No one gets here on their own. Uh, but speaking of that, I'd like to wrap up with something a little bit different here. And so, uh, uh, first of all, if you would, please stand if, uh, if you've ever coached or competed with me or against me at any point. Ray, you can stand up too, you and Cody. Uh, also stand if you've ever coached, uh, if you ever coached any sport at any level. If you've ever written an article or spoke on TV about sports and inspired many of us with the stories. If you've ever been coached or competed with any of the people that are now standing, and I would include Coach Nicklin and uh, Coach Vincent who are not here, Coach Chipman. And then if you've encouraged, enabled, bought athletic gear, paid for travel ball, uh, you know, please stand as well. And now lastly, the, the student athletes that are here to be honored tonight and any other athletes that have played sports for their respective schools, either now or in the past, if you would, please stand. And if you will, just look around for a minute. You are the past, the present, and the future of, of athletic excellence here in the Shawnee County area. Many of you will be the environment for the next generation and the ones that follow. Thank you for your personal pursuits of excellence, for your willingness to share that, that expertise with those that are next, and for the great examples that can and will continue to be set in the future. The sports environment in Shawnee County is fantastic. You are my environment. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and for the inspiring accomplishments that are yet to come. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here tonight and for bestowing me with this honor. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the newest Shawnee County Hall of Famer, Chris Barnes. Chris said he just wanted to make sure he got a standing ovation. So. <laughs> but we do have a tape of your wife's speech, so you can just put that on loop, okay? That's never going to <laughs> I don't know how I ever get one of those. All right, um, we're going to start uh, our high school honorees uh, with the fall female. We'll ask them to come up and form a line here in front of the stage as we honor each of them here tonight. We start with Hayton High School's Janessa Brockstrom and her parents, Justin and Stacy. She turned a solid season as a lone senior on Hayden's volleyball team. Janessa really stepped up this year as a leader on our team and as a result was a positive role model for all of her teammates, said Jim Davis, Brockstrom's coach. She finished her season with 143 kills, 110 digs, served 89%. Her strong swing and her ability to place the ball made her hard to defend the net, resulting in her being one of our top hitters. We're all sure she's going to do great things. Brockstrom was also a standout for Hayden's soccer team that finished third and fourth through 1A, and she assigned a letter of intent at Kansas State with their rowing program, Janessa Brockstrom from Hayden. <laughs> from Highland Park, Jayden Wilson, her mom, Jennifer. Uh, Wilson, a leader for the Highland Park team, which made transition to the Metal Art Conference last season. Uh, she was a dependable athlete and always 
at the required practices as well as available for extra practice, said Renee Langer, her coach. As a student, she was able to maintain her GPA, play sports, and work and attend cosmetology school. Jaden was one of uh, the who got along with everyone in general and was an excellent leader and team captain. She took constructive criticism and learned from it and then applied it to her advantage. Jaden Wilson from Highland Park. From Rossville, Amelia Foster in cross country, Alan and Ann, her parents. Foster wrapped up an outstanding high school career for the Bulldogs with appearances in the 3A state cross country track and field championships as well. She was a three-time state qualifier in cross country, including 17th place finish in the 2A in 2019. She placed 25th in 3A state meet in 21, 26th in 22. She earned 3A state track medals three straight seasons, placing sixth in the 800 and eighth in the 400. She was a role model uh, according to her coach, Mindy Dean. Rossville's Amelia Foster. <laughs> From Seaman, Lois Dieter in golf, John and Tasha, her parents. She earned all city, all league, all state honors in each of her three high school golf seasons, placing in the top 10 in the 5A state tournament. Lois has been a team leader since her freshman year on the golf team, and she has set every school record during her career here at Seaman, said Viking coach Julie McLaughlin. As a senior, she won the United Kansas Conference individual title, leading Seaman to the team championship. She has signed a letter of intent to play collegiately at Arkansas Tech, Seaman's Lois Dieter. <laughs> we have a second athlete from Seaman, Lauren Sweeney. Sweeney, the state singles runner-up in 5A state tournament last fall after earning the uh, title with Grace Unruh in the state championship and doubles as a junior, a perfect 36-0 record, took fourth as a sophomore at state, she won the United Kansas Conference and 5A Regional Championships in 2022. Senior captain and led by example in team drills and conditioning, said Seaman coach Jamie Robinson. She volunteered and assisted in leading summer camps. Uh, she gives private and group lessons. Sweeney also played basketball during her high school career, assigned a letter of intent to play at the University of Missouri at St. Louis. Lauren Sweeney from Seaman. From Shawnee Heights, Taylor Rottinghouse in volleyball. Her parents, Michael and Teresa, she was a standout in volleyball, basketball, and track and field uh, at Shawnee Heights throughout her high school career. All United Kansas Conference, all Shawnee County recognition in volleyball and basketball, earning multiple 5A state medals. Taylor is not only a great athlete, but a great leader, student, and person, said Shawnee Heights volleyball coach Samantha McHenry. We've been so lucky to have her represent our school these past four years, and we can't wait to see uh, her be successful at the next level. Rotting House has signed a letter of intent to stay right here at Washburn and play for the Division II power, Washburn Ichabods. Taylor Rotting House from Shawnee Heights. <laughs> from Silver Lake, Mariah Farmer from Cross Country, her parents Travis and Amanda. Farmer, a two-time Mid-East League champion in Cross Country, helping the Eagles win the league and Class 3A regional team titles in 19 and 20. Uh, winning a 3A individual championship in 19. Farmer was a three-time state qualifier, two-time state medalist. Mariah always gives 100%, extremely competitive, said her coach Kevin Brokaw. She is a great teammate that leads by example in all phases of life. She helped the Eagles earn third and fourth place state finishes, earning a state medal in track. She plans to attend Washburn University from Silver Lake, Mariah Farmer. Also from Silver Lake, Taylor Ross in volleyball, Matt and Dusty, her parents. Ross uh, earned her first team all Shawnee County, all Mideast League volleyball recognition as a senior, recording 239 kills, 88 blocks, hit 341. Taylor is a standout three-sport athlete, said Silver Lake volleyball coach Sarah Johnson. She has played a crucial part in Silver Lake volleyball program in the last four years. She exhibits all the high level of competitiveness, desire, and succeeds. And she assigned a letter of intent to play college basketball at Ellsworth Community College in Iowa from Silver Lake, Taylor Ross. <laughs> from Topeka High, Marlena Zuniga, her parent uh, Alyssa, three-sport athlete for the Topeka High Trojans, a standout for cross country this past fall. She was our best cross country runner all season, said coach Ken Bennett. She's an incredibly hard worker. She earned all Shawnee County honorable mention honors in track and was part of the Trojan City Championship four by one meter relay. Uh, she was a two-time state qualifier for the 6A state tournament. She earned first team all Shawnee County wrestling honors in 22, second team recognition this past season from Topeka High, Marlena Zuniga. 
From Topeka West, Mackenzie Jones, her parents Terry and Helen, an all Shawnee County first team selection. She was the go-to hitter for Topeka West's volleyball team last fall, recording 260 kills, 51 solo blocks. Jones ended her senior season playing six rotations, was credited with 44 perfect passes, 59 digs to go with 14 aces, 240 service attempts. She was Topeka West two-year varsity captain, leads through skills, hard work in games and practice, not just for her, but for her team, said Alex Nash, her coach. Jones has signed a letter of intent to play college volleyball at Kansas State from Topeka West, Mackenzie Jones. And from Washburn Rural, Brooklyn DeLay, her parents John and Janelle. She was a two-time Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year, two-time 6A Player of the Year in volleyball while being named All-State first team four years. She led Washburn Rural to the 6A State Championship last fall, finished her high school career as Rural's career leader in kills with 2,090. Most hit attempts, 4,086. Most hits complete, 3,496. And aces served, 277, uh, said Kevin Borderwick, her coach and now a Hall of Famer. Brooklyn is one of the most dominant game changers that has ever graced the volleyball courts here in Kansas. She helped the Junior Blues win 6A basketball title as well, was a standout in soccer. She will play volleyball at Kentucky from Washburn Rural, Brooklyn DeLay. And our fall female athlete of the year is Brooklyn DeLay from Washburn Rural. <laughs> Kevin Borderwick will uh, come up and accept her award uh, for this uh, honor as being the Fall Female Athlete of the Year. And Coach, I'll just ask you a qu couple quick questions. Uh, I mean, obviously when you have an athlete of her stature, uh, a lot of coaches just say, I just get out of their way and try not screw them up. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I did. Yeah, I didn't want to mess anything up there, so I just let her go. Why do you see that she's been so successful at everything she's done? Work ethic, competitiveness, uh, a real diligence and resilience. Um, she's just one of, one of a kind. Well, thanks for accepting this award on her behalf. Congratulations. Thank Brooklyn you. DeLay, Washburn Rural. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Time for our fall male athletes of the year. Again, if gentlemen, if you could come up and form the line here in front of the stage. We start off with Hayden's Joe Otting from football, his parents Eric and Debbie. Otting a three-sport standout for the Wildcats, consensus all-state top 11 selection as a senior, starring as an offensive and defensive lineman for Hayden that went 10 and two, advanced to the 3A state title football semifinals. He'll play collegiately at Notre Dame, led the offense that rushed for over 3,000 yards and averaged over 8.5 a carry. Defensively, Otting had 81 tackles, 42 of those were solo, three tackles for loss. Coach Bill Arnold said Joe was a great example of a student athlete, participated in three sports, was an honor roll student, great role model to the younger kids, and never passed up an opportunity to make them feel special. He's received numerous postseason honors in basketball and was a state medalist in, in track and field. Joe Otting from Hayden. From Highland Park, uh, Mackie James in football, Morris and Jenny, his parents. James named Defensive Player of the Year in the Metal Art Conference with 90 tackles, five forced fumbles, or, or five fumble recoveries, seven forced fumbles, six and a half sacks, two interceptions, including one for a touchdown. He helped the Scots snap an eight-year losing streak on the way to a breakout six and three season. His coach, Jermaine Monroe, said he's a true leader and teammate. I love how he makes sure the younger players are taken care of he is highly respected by his peers. He will play collegiately at Washburn from Highland Park, Mackie James. <laughs> from Rossville, Jacob Carver in football, Mark and Jill as parents, an offensive lineman, a four-year starter, senior captain for the Dogs, helped Rossville win the 2A state championships in 20 and 21. He was a two-time All-Shawnee County, All-Mideast League performer, first team pick, earning all 2A recognition from various organizations. He was a selection for the Kansas Shrine Bowl. Jacob exhibits a standard of excellence as a student athlete as well, said Coach Derek Hamas. Rossville's faculty, staff, and students regard him as a person who leads by example. He's looked to, up to by everyone in the school. He also was a 3 through 1A state wrestling uh, performer, junior. Fourth as a senior, will play collegiately at Emporia State from Rossville, Jacob Carver. <laughs> from Seaman, 
Bryson Vodder, his parents, Ryan and Aaron, he was an all Shawnee County top 22 pick this last fall, received first team all United Kansas Conference recognition at running back. He rushed for 626 yards, eight touchdowns, 105 carries, recorded 62 tackles, 42 of them solo, along with six tackles for loss. His head coach, uh, uh, Jared Swafford at Seaman said, Bryson is a multi-sport athlete, more importantly, a student athlete. He's a captain for our team. He was honored by his teammates, by his peers. He shows great leadership. He's a tremendous competitor. An all-stater in baseball, Vodder will play at Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Siemens Bryson Vodder. <laughs> From Shawnee Heights, Jaden Berry, a defensive back, his parents Keith and Annette. He led Shawnee Heights with four interceptions, eight pass breakups this past fall while recording 50 tackles, 31 solo. Jaden was an outstanding football and baseball player, said Heights football coach Jason Swift. As a senior, he dominated on defense by covering the best receiver, even though he was undersized. He practiced hard always and led by example and set the tone for the team. He also was a three-year letterman in baseball. He plans to attend Washburn, Shawnee Heights, Jaden Berry. From Silver Lake, Troy Hyman in football, Jim and Amy, his parents. He was a big had a big senior season for Logan Pegram's Silver Lake program last fall, 38 uh, receptions, 468 yards, seven touchdowns. As a new coach inheriting a program, Troy exemplified excellency every day, Pegram said. Silver Lake is a better place because of Troy Hyman. He was a first team all Mid-East League selection, received all Shawnee County honors uh, in, in among the top 22. He also was a basketball standout for the Eagles, earning all Mid-East Mid League uh, first team honors, second all county honors and was also a state track qualifier signed a letter of intent to play collegiately right here at Washburn from Silver Lake Troy Hyman. <laughs> from Topeka High Peyton Weed is Parrot Scott and Erica. He was a standout quarterback for the Trojans completing 126 of 246 for 1,718 yards, eight touchdowns as a senior while throwing just four interceptions. He received second 22 all Shawnee County uh, recognition. Leadership, intangibles, and competitive spirit are the best words that describe Peyton, said Topeka High coach Carlos Kelly. If you had a team full of Peytons, you'd have a championship quality team. Uh, he also earned all Shawnee County honorable mention and he will play football at West Texas A&M. From Topeka High, Peyton Wheat. <laughs> From Topeka West, Lenny Neroje. After missing his entire junior season while recovering from a broken leg, Neroje swept individual championships in City, United Kansas Conference, and 5A regional competition as a senior before posting a fourth place finish at State. Also a soccer standout, he was a 5A medalist in all three of his state appearances finishing 12th as a freshman, 11th as a sophomore. Lenny is an excellent leader for our program at West, said Charger coach Donnie Palmer. He leads by working hard and being a positive encourager for the other runners. Lenny's drive and determination will serve him well as he runs at the next level at KU. Topeka West, Lenny Neroje. From Washburn Rural, Ty Weber. Weber uh, named Shawnee County Defensive Player of the Year as a junior and a senior, was also the Centennial League Defensive Player of the Year, earned multiple all-class 6A recognition for multiple organizations. Shrine Bowl pick, he was a four-year starter for the Junior Blues, recording 118 tackles, 71 of them solo, 18 tackles for loss, two sacks and an interception. He returned one of those for a touchdown. He led the Junior Blues in tackles as a sophomore, junior, and senior. He also played baseball uh, for the Junior Blues and earned uh, first team honors there. He will play collegiately at Washburn. Ty Weber from Washburn Rural. And our fall male athlete of the year is from Hayden, Joe Otting. And his mom, Debbie, will accept the award on his behalf. Come on, Big E, you couldn't come up? Come on up, real quick. I won't put you on the spot that long, but just for a little bit. What does this mean? I, I, I mean, I, I know, uh, you know, Joe had a, an outstanding career, senior year that was awesome, uh, but what does this honor mean? Well, 
Um, I know Joe would be very humbled and honored to receive this award, and I know he would first want to congratulate all of these nominees. He grew up playing youth sports with a lot of these boys, and so he'd just be honored to be sharing the stage with them and congratulate them as well. And uh, South Bend is in your future? South Bend is in our future. He's up there now. He's enrolled in classes and hard at work um, with them and, and uh, getting after it, so he's ready to roll. Congratulations. Thank you. Debbie Otting, Joe's mom, and gentlemen, thank you so much. And congratulations on your nominations. It's time to meet our second Hall of Famer. And the chance to introduce him tonight, he probably had a wealth of picks. And I know he told the people that were going to introduce him that this isn't a roast. But I'm guessing there will be some roast lines involved. Uh, introducing him tonight, longtime friend and former coaching rival, Steve Alexander. Steve, a longtime head coach at Seaman. He and Kevin actually began their coaching careers at Randolph Blue Valley in 1986. To introduce us to Kevin Borderwick, our next Hall of Famer, please welcome Steve Alexander. Well, Bruce just stole my first two jokes of the day, so. <laughs> um, so it is really an honor to um, be able to um, introduce my, one of, I consider one of my best friends, in, uh, Coach Bordewick, into the Hall of Fame. Him and I did start together with another coach, Tom Smith. It was our very first year of ever coaching and at Blue Valley Randolph. And uh, we coach every sport except for volleyball and girls basketball at the middle school and the high school, just us three. And we learned such good resume builders as they came out and told us before the first game, you have to line the field, that's part of your job. You have to line the field. So we learned how to line a field. We were hosting a league track meet. And they said, well, you have to line the Crush Rock track meet. So we're out there with a book trying to line the track meet. So good things to add to your resume. Um, he then, after two years, um, got the girls job and, um, and became a head coach. And then that was kind of the start of what's going on now. Um, him and I have became very close. He stood up with me at my wedding. Um, probably a little too much information. Our two kids are like just months apart. So both and so, um, and so that's kind of how it started. So after five years at Blue Valley Randolph, we kind of separated for a couple of years. Then he joined Coach Annan at Washburn Rule, and I was at Seaman. And about the time he came to Washburn Rule, I got the head girls job at Seaman in 1993. And so then we we're kind of reunited and, um, and had a lot of time to have some good competitive um, games across the now. He, him, and Washburn Rule got the best of us probably more times than I would have liked. Um, but it was always fun to be able to compete against uh, your best friends um, like that. Um, yeah, if you look at that whole that resume that you know they put there, like like when he first took over the the Blue Valley Randolph volleyball team, I don't really know how much he knew about volleyball. His sister played college volleyball, so I know he'd seen some games. And he had line judged a couple of volleyball games, so I know he knew what in and out was. Um, but, um, but other than that, he really didn't know that much about it. And so that's where you could really see the work ethic of Kevin take off. He really dug in. He really um, got college coaches, went to clinics. He was just like a sponge, learned and learned and learned. And, you know, and then he was even away from the sport for a couple of years when he was at Oskaloosa and then back at um, Washburn Rule, he got back into it. And then whatever, I mean, who go, who wins a thousand games and only loses 200? That is like crazy. That is like crazy. So, but in my opinion, the three things that make Kevin a Hall of Fame inductee and the coach that you see now is one is he cares about kids. He's up at the school all the time, which is probably why his marriage is really good because Pat gets to get him out of the house. Um, <laughs> But he spends a lot of time up at, up at school. He'll help kids out, whatever they want. But he's really interested in them being good on the court and off the court. Um, two, his work ethic, which I already kind of talked about when he first got the volleyball job. But beyond that is, like, he sees things on film when he watches film 
that I could watch the same film and never see. He sees little intricacies and stuff. And every time we would play each other, we'd always like have this big debrief. And I would always learn something about my team that I didn't know, and I'm with them every day. That's the kind of, that's the kind of person he is. And the third thing, which is really can't really be replicated, is the Borderwick look. <laughs> now, if you've ever been to a Washington World basketball or volleyball game, all of his players and ex-players that are in here, oh, they know the volleyball look, or the Borderwick look. First, it kind of starts with he's, well, he's usually standing all the time anyway, but he stands, and then he kind of gets that glare, and then his eyes start to kind of bulge out of his head a little bit, and then his whole face from his neck up turns really bright red, and now that he doesn't have so much hair, it really shows off, and probably biting his lip and saying some things under his breath. So the girls always, their eyes get big, and they kind of get together because they're trying to, can we pull what's going on? out and make it right before he calls a timeout because we don't want to go over to the sideline. So, but that's the competitive nature of Kevin. He is a great friend. It's, um, it's good to be, have been able to go through this 37 years with him. And he is, this is most deserving um, Hall of Fame induction. So I introduce my friend, Kevin Bordeaux. Thanks, Steve. Um, I guess I do feel like I came through that relatively unscathed, even though there was there were some parts there. Um, at first, I want to congratulate Chris on a, on a fantastic career, and, and my gosh, the, the skill level that you have for the sport that you do uh, is accentuated when I watch my girls' basketball team go bowling. Uh, you have 55 career perfect games, we have 55 gutter balls in the first five frames. I mean, it's just the skill level that you have acquired and, th and through lots of practice is amazing. So congrats to you, Chris. Um, Crystal, congrats to you. I didn't get a chance to talk to you beforehand, but I know Bill and I always felt good if we could hold you to 35. Uh, and I don't know if we were very successful at that, but you were tremendous. And the big Big name, I had a spy at Topeka High for 31 years in the counseling department, and she always said what a great person you were, and that's probably even more than the accolade you received as a player, so congrats. Rick, I really don't have anything good to say about, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but Rick, uh, if the Hall of Fame had a Hall of Fame, you'd be in that. That is how much I feel, and, and all the coaches and the, the players you write about, feel about you. You've elevated their games. Everybody likes to see their name in the paper. Uh, you're a legend. Everybody knows that you should have been in here before the Hall of Fame was even made. So congrats to you, Rick. Um, I ran this speech, well, my original speech to my focus group last weekend. Um, my focus group consisted of my son and his wife, my daughter, and my wife. And they blasted it. So I've narrowed this thing down. I was told not to tell hardly any stories, if any. Say your thank yous, say who you appreciate, and, and get on out. Um, so first, I'll, I want to talk about Steve. And, and, and like he said, we've been friends ever since we started. And I was his boys' assistant basketball coach. And I'm a newbie, rookie. I'm coaching the JV boys. And this is probably the first or second game. It was a home game. And there was a call that didn't exactly go our way. And before I could even get up to say anything, there's this clipboard that comes down the stairs, followed by, that's terrible, that's horrible. And the clipboard lands over by the official, looks at me, and gives me a technical. And I knew right away who that was, and that was Steve, that threw the clipboard down the stairs and yelled, that's terrible, yelled, that's horrible. And I didn't even have to turn around. I told the official, I don't even know that dude. Hey, I, I don't know who he is. He's deranged. I have no, that did not save me from getting the technical. I don't feel I deserve that, obviously. And I think every technical I've got since then, I don't deserve either. But 
Uh, he's been great. He, he got me indoctrinated into coaching, uh, showed me a lot of things about what to do, what not to do. Um, so I'm very grateful to have you as a friend for all these years. Uh, Bill Annan, who uh, Steve mentioned also, uh, talked me into coming to Washburn Rural a long time ago, 30 years ago. And he and I had played fast pit softball for a long time at that point. Uh, he goes, Kevin, if you can come up here, I know that we're going to have a great thing coming. I know that we can get this basketball program turned around. But talk about a, a guy who was a great mentor. Uh, he didn't know he was mentoring me, but I was soaking everything I could up from him as far as developing a culture, uh, developing expectations out of kids, how to build a program. And everybody knows he's phenomenal. Uh, he, he left, uh, I was his uh, varsity assistant for 16 years. I can't thank him enough for showing me the ropes on how to really run a program. So thank you, Bill. Um, I'd like to thank Chris Ridley, who was our athletic director for a long time. Uh, I was Penny Lane's assistant volleyball coach for my first two years at Washburn Rural, and then she resigned that position. And I just happened to see Chris in the hallway one day, and I go, hey, if you're, if you're interested in me and being the head coach of, uh, for the volleyball team, I'd really like to do that. He goes, yeah, you're hired. And <laughs> I go, okay, that was pretty easy. This is how all interviews go. Um, but I want to thank him for believing in me and giving me a chance and giving me a shot. Uh, Penny Lane was in our AD, and then when Bill resigned, um, I expressed an interest in it, and she gave me the job and, and gave me a chance to, to be a head basketball coach at Washburn Rural. So I, I appreciate both of them in the belief that they had in me to do that. Um, I've had tremendous assistant coaches. One is here today, Amanda Vander Bogart, who I actually coached way back when she was little in club volleyball, and now she's my assistant varsity coach in volleyball, and it's just been great to experience all, all the success that we've had with her. Um, but I want to thank her as well as all of my previous assistant coaches. Um, I want to thank my parents, um, who couldn't make tonight, but uh, they kindly kicked me off the farm and made me go to college. I was not going to be I thought I could try college. I wasn't going to be real big on it, but I think I'd have been just happy being a farmer, doing what we, I've done my whole life. Um, took me a while to get through college, but when I finally did, uh, it, I, it just kind of turned into this, and I, I really do appreciate all the support that they've ever given me. Um, Alexa and Luke, my two kids, I got the uh, privilege to coach them all at high school at various stages. Uh, with Alexa, we had a little bit more success. I got to uh, have four state championships with her in volleyball and then another state championship in basketball. There's not a whole lot of kids that go through high school that can say they, they win that much. Um, but that was, that's something that's very dear to my heart. So thanks, Alexa and Luke. Um, my wife, Patty, uh, every coach knows you got to have a rock and a foundation to hold things together. And that's what my wife does. Um, promise I wouldn't get emotional, so I'm not going to look over there. Um, but she's been everything. And she's allowed me to do this for so long and to continue doing it for a little bit longer. I don't know how long that will be, but a little bit. Uh, but I really appreciate you, Patty, so thank you. Um, Washburn Earls had some legendary coaches. And especially as a young coach at Washburn Earl, I got to see... Uh, Ron Bowen in action. I got to see Kevin Hedberg for a long time, Brenda Holliday. The current coaching staff that we have is exceptional at what they do. Um, and to learn and interact and see how things go with their programs, even if you're not directly talking to them, if you watch them and observe, that has been a real learning uh, experience for me. And even at my age, which I'm up there, um, it's, I still try to learn as much as I can, and our current coaching staff has really helped us with, helped me with that. Um, lastly, the, the credit for anything that I've done goes to the athletes that I've had the privilege to coach. Um, to say we've had exceptional athletes in volleyball and girls basketball would be an understatement. Um, you know, you just look at the last couple of years, I had a kid named Carly Batchelor who was athlete of the year 
in volleyball, in girls basketball, and in soccer. And if you can't win a lot with a kid like that, then you might want to look in the mirror and say, what's going on? Uh, recently, a kid named Brooklyn Delay, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year. So when you get kids like that, and also their teammates who are role players and understand what their role are, then you're probably going to have a lot of success. But I've been blessed. I've been lucky. I'm very grateful for what I've for what I've had at Washburn Rural. Um, and I can't thank, especially the athletes and all the people that have been on this journey with me, I can't thank them enough. So I want to thank the Topeka Shawnee County Sports Hall of Fame for thinking that I'm worthy of this. Uh, I appreciate it, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the newest Hall of Famer in Topeka Shawnee County, Kevin Borderwick. All right, now it's time to honor our winter female and male athletes. Again, as we announce you, uh, come here in the front of the stage and accept your certificate. From Hayden High School, Emily Ireland in bowling, John and Michelle, her parents. Ireland posted a first place finish in two bowling meets, was a runner up in another meet as a senior. She posted a 157 average, 2023 season, game high of 202. She placed 16th in the Centennial League Tournament, 21st at regionals. Emily was an overachiever, said Hayden Bowling coach Brian Hackett. She bowled four years for me and consistently improved each year and was always wanting to learn more and do better. She was a good team member who tried to help the younger bowlers improve their skills. From Hayden High School, Emily Ireland. <laughs> From Highland Park, Ruby Hernandez in wrestling, Luis and Alexandra, her parents, she was a three-year letter winner for the uh, Scots wrestling team, posted a record of 23-9 in 2023. Ruby was a leader on and off the mat in all sports and activities she participated in, said Highland Park coach Shannon Keller. She would continually mentor the young wrestlers in order to help them perform better. She received all Shawnee County honorable mention as both a junior and senior for the Scots. From Highland Park, Ruby Hernandez. From Seaman High School, Katie Price in bowling. Jason and Christy are parents. She capped a high school bowling career with a second place finish in the 5 through 1A state tournament, 637 series, four pins out of first. She helped Seaman earn the third place team trophy, bowled a school record 753 game series in 19 school free state invitational. She had games of 223, 248, and 279. She bowled a 527 series in the United Kansas Conference Tournament and a 505 at regionals, helping the Vikings win both team titles. As a junior, she captured the 5 through 1A state championship. She assigned uh, to play bowling at Peru State from Seaman Katie Price. <laughs> from Shawnee Heights, Molly Business in wrestling, David and Isabel, her parents, she was a 6-5A wrestling medalist as a junior, 17-0, 16 pins, one technical fall as a senior before suffering a torn ACL. She was ranked second in the state when the season-ending injury occurred. Molly was a multi-sport athlete participating in both cross-country and wrestling, said head coach Chad Parks. Molly was a team leader and both captain in both sports. She thrived in the classroom, taking honors courses throughout her high school career, a 3.7 unweighted GPA, two-time United Kansas Conference champion, 49 and 11 in her career with 44 pins, named Shawnee Heights 2023 Wrestler of the Year. She'll wrestle at Ottawa from Shawnee Heights, Molly Buznitz. From Silver Lake, Taylor Ross in basketball, Matt and Dusty are parents. She was a second team all Shawnee County selection, earned 3A honorable mention as a senior after helping Silver Lake to a fourth place finish in the 3A basketball tournament. Taylor Ross has been a key contributor to the success of our girls basketball program, said Kyle Porter, Silver Lake's coach, a three-year starter. She led the uh, fiery personality and gritty mindset when Taylor played well. Our team was at our best. Ross, a three-sport standout for the Eagles, earning postseason recognition in all three sports. She'll play basketball at Ellsworth, Iowa Community College from Silver Lake, Taylor Ross. From Topeka High School, Kiki Smith in basketball, Darrell and Harmony, her parents. She completed an outstanding four-year basketball career for the Trojan City, leading 20.4 points per game, connected on 53 pointers. 
over the 22-23 season. Also led City in assist at 4.4 per game, rebounds 4.9, and steals 3.1. She was a four-time All-Centennial League performer, four-time All-Class 6A honoree, helped the Trojans advance to the uh, three 6A state tournaments. She signed a letter of intent to play collegiately at the University of Evansville from Topeka High, Kiki Smith. From Topeka West, uh, Zaria Duncan in basketball, Tornall and Jada, her parents. Duncan averaged seven points, three boards, three steals as a senior for the Charger basketball team. Showed significant improvement. She moved uh, here at the beginning of her sophomore year and immediately made a positive impact, said Jeff Scar, Duncan's high school coach at Topeka West. She is a diligent perfectionist. She showed great leadership during her junior and senior seasons, had some of her best games against our toughest opponents. Azaria Duncan from Topeka West. <laughs> and from Washburn Rural, Addie Brockstrom in wrestling, Justin and Marla, her parents. She ended her record-setting four-year career at Washburn Rural, captured three state team championships. Her 146 career victories made her the winningest wrestler in Kansas history. Brockstrom's 132 career wins by fall, 34 three-point fall, near falls, her state records, and she holds the school record with 45 single-season wins. She was a three-time state medalist, two-time state finalist, four-time Centennial League champion. Her coach, Damon Parker, said Addison has set the gold standard for women's wrestling, not just at Washburn Rural, but across the state of Kansas. She will wrestle collegiately at Fort Hayes from Washburn Rural, Addie Brockstroman. <laughs> and the winner... Female Athlete of the Year is Addie Brockstroman from Washburn Rural. Addie, congratulations. Uh, just a fantastic career. What, what do you owe your success to? Uh, definitely to my coaches and my peers because I knew nothing about wrestling before I was 14 years old. So definitely to them and my family. So all of that, you didn't start until 14. What sparked your interest in wrestling, and then how did you get so good at it? Uh, my amazing coach took me out when I was playing PE dodgeball and said I was good at dodgeball, so he asked if I would wrestle. And it definitely <laughs> sparked my interest, and then I just attended every practice from there and got better and better. A new recruiting sport, dodgeball, who knew? <laughs> uh, going to wrestling at Fort, State, Fort Hayes State, and I know it is exciting more and more opportunities for women to wrestle beyond high school. How exciting is that? I'm definitely excited because my teammates are insanely good and just the roster is crazy. So I'm excited for new experiences and to meet new people. Congratulations. Thank you. Addie Broxerman, Washburn Rural. And please again help me welcoming and congratulating our winner female athlete honorees. Thank you, ladies. Time now to honor the winter male athletes. From Hayden High School, Joe Otting in basketball, Eric and Debbie, his parents. Three sports standout for the Wildcats, all Shawnee County, all league, all class 4A in basketball. Averaged 16.6 points, 8.4 rebounds, shooting 58% from the field. His coach, Dwayne Paul, said Joe embodies everything about what it should mean to be at Hayden High School. He's a man of God. He's a pillar of the community, an amazing student athlete. When it comes to our basketball team, Joe was not only one of the most talented guys in the state, but the hardest worker. He's an all-state football player, state medalist in track who plays football at Notre Dame, Joe Otting from Hayden. <laughs> from Highland Park, Jameer King Cannon, his parents Danielle and Marshall. He played a key role for the Scots basketball team, posting a 24-1 record, finished third in 5A state tournament. Leadership and follow-through, said Michael Williams, is what stands out about Jameer. He was arguably one of the best overall student athletes we've had come through Highland Park, a model student, model citizen, exhibited stellar character at all times. He averaged 11.3 points, four boards, shooting 41% from three, signed a letter of intent to play at Kansas Wesleyan. From Highland Park, Jameer King Cannon. <laughs> From Seaman High School, Jackson Thomason Wrestling, Richard and Karen, his parents, he was a Class 5A, 285-pound state wrestling champion uh, as a senior, jumping up two weight divisions for his final season. Posted a 46-5 record 2023 season, avenged a regional loss in the state championship match, pinning Blue Valley Southwest senior Taryn Forsyth in the second period. Thomas recorded a pin in the final match of the United Kansas Conference Tournament to give Seaman the UKC team championship. 
Seaman's first season in that conference. As a junior, he was a Centennial League champion and a 5A state qualifier, a standout for the Seaman football team, receiving all Shawnee County honorable mention as a senior. Jackson Thomas from Seaman. <laughs> from Shawnee Heights, Sean Wonder in wrestling. Shannon, his parent, Sean is a multi-sport athlete excelling in both football and wrestling, said Shawnee Heights head coach Chad Parks. Sean, a team leader, both a captain in both sports. He thrives in the classroom, taking honors courses throughout high school, graduating with a GPA of 4.23. During his wrestling season, he would finish practice at 5, go to work by 6. He worked from 6 to midnight most nights and could still keep up with the demands of wrestling and school. A wonderful example of a student athlete. He was a three-time 5A state placer, finished his career 136 wins with 107 pins from Shawnee Heights, Sean Wonder. From Topeka High, Ty Votaw in basketball, Chris and Jamie his parents. He averaged seven points, six boards for the Trojans. Ty was a key contributor to basketball this season, said Topeka High coach Geo Lyons. He provided us with the hard-nosed presence that we needed insi inside, despite being undersized. He was a tremendous baseball player. Votaw helped Trojan baseball earn a birth in the 6A state tournament for the first time in more than seven decades, earned all Shawnee County honorable mention honors in baseball as a senior, plans to attend Northwest Missouri State from Topeka High, Ty Votaw. <laughs> from Topeka West, Malachi Berg, Carissa, his mother, Berg averaged 13 points, eight boards as a senior, shooting 60% from the field. He earned second team, all United Kansas Conference, all 5A honorable mention, respected by his peers, not only in the athletic community, but in the general school population, said Topeka West Ho head coach Rick Bloomquist. Work ethic off the floor exemplifies his work ethic on the floor. His dedication to get better each day and help make his teammates better is what makes Malachi who he is. He was also a star quarterback for the Chargers. He'll play collegiately at Hutchinson Community College from Topeka West, Malachi Berg. <laughs> and from Washburn Rural, Jack Bachelor. Bachelor, uh, his parents, Aaron and Angie, it's hard for me not to call him the little bacho meter. I, this is how old I am. I called his dad's play-by-play -play when he was going to high school. Bachelor, Centennial League Basketball Player of the Year, first team all Shawnee County selection, received all 6A honors from multiple organizations, 17.1 points, 2.9 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 1.4 steals, shot 62% from two and 40% from three, 82% from the line. It might be unrealistic to claim that a single person could be the emotional spark plug for the entire student body of nearly 2,000, but when it comes to Jack Batchelor and Washburn Rural, that's the exact claim I make, said Alec Hutchins, his head coach. He's going to play collegiately right here at Washburn, where his dad did at Washburn University. From Washburn Rural, Jack Batchelor. <laughs> and the winner, male athlete of the year, is... Jackson Thomas. <laughs> we wanted to give you a little suspense. Does that, that feel good? Yeah, I got scared. <laughs> well, well, tell me, uh, what does this award mean to be the Winter Male Athlete of the Year in Shawnee County? Uh, it feels pretty good. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. Okay, did you play dodgeball? I mean, you know, we had a... No, I'm actually, I'm terrible at dodgeball. You're terrible at dodgeball. Okay, so that you didn't get recruited from... So what do you feel allowed you to excel in wrestling? Um, just my teammates around me, especially freshman year coming in, all my teammates really hammered on me and beat me up. So, <laughs> and I was still little then, so now they can't. <laughs> <laughs> What's the future hold? Uh, I'm going Fort Hayes to wrestle and play some football, so I'm really excited to get in the room with all those people that are just uh, the top of the top, and I'm ready to get beat up again. <laughs> uh, you're, by your junior, senior year, you'll do the beating, right? Yeah. All right, Jackson Thomas from Seaman, our male winter athlete of the year. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, it's time to honor our third Hall of Famer, and I had the honor of watching her play in the dungeon, and as I think Coach Borderwick and Coach Alexander said, you know, hold her under 35, uh, if you could. 
Um, and obviously watching her play at KU and just seeing the young woman she has turned into. And we get to meet her tonight through the eyes of her brother, Chris, who was a standout at Topeka High. And he went on to play collegiately as well. To introduce us to Hall of Famer Crystal Kemp, please welcome her brother, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Okay. So let's just jump right to it. So Crystal was destined for greatness right away. Although the youngest and the shortest in our household, my brother and I knew at an early age um, that Crystal would defy the odds and accomplish some really great things. And so speaking of odds, Let's take a minute to think about we're recognizing the same woman who, when she was younger, would throw a fit when the bottom part of her hot dog bun broke. <laughs> so much so that my brother and I had to give up our hot dog bun that was still intact before she would even want to finish her hot dog. <laughs> but don't let this Hall of Fame inductee fool you. She embodied, she embodied everything it meant to be a little sister and she still does to this day. Seriously, we started to get an idea of who she would be and how great she would be when she was in the eighth grade, when she would go with me and my brother uh, and play basketball at Central Park Community Center, and we'll be playing with my friends. At eighth grade, when she started beating my friends, <laughs> the neighborhood took notice very quickly. And at some point, College recruiters came and life changed. And at that point, my brother and I were more like security guards than big brothers. We were kind of <laughs> checking people at the door, letting people in if they had an appointment. So most sports fans know the story of Reggie and Cheryl Miller. Reggie had started his first game and scored 40 points, had such a great accomplishment. It was the best game he had yet. And he got home and was excited to tell the news to his, his parents and his sister only to be one-upped by his sister, Cheryl Miller, to tell him that she had scored 105 points. <laughs> that was me and Crystal. I remember playing what I thought was my best college career game. Scored a lot of points. It was just a great day. So my college coach, as well as the women's, the women's coach, came along with me to call Crystal to tell her about my accomplishment only to be told that not only did she score more points than me that day, while at her freshman year at Kansas, was also named the freshman of the week in the Big 12. <laughs> so after hanging up the phone in embarrassment and letting that coach know he wasn't going to get to pull her from Kansas University, we knew what was to come. So in the years after her collegiate basketball career, Crystal went on to play professional basketball in Romania for a couple of years and assisting that team to a championship. And uh, upon returning home, she taught and coached high school basketball until shifting her focus to become an assistant principal while working to finish her, her doctorate degree to become an athletic director. Yeah, we're still trying to figure out where she keeps her cape and she still hasn't slowed down. But she keeps that same tenacity and tidal wave like impact to every aspect of her life, whether it be sports, her career, her family, most importantly, motherhood, which brings me to the honor and title that I know she wears most proudly. As a mother, she has modeled a work ethic and passion that I already see showing up in my niece, her middle, her mini me, and my nephew. They've already begun to demonstrate the same giftedness in sports and basketball that she had. Every parent in the room knows that no personal accomplishment compares to the pride we feel when watching our children blossom and no one embodies that truth more than Crystal. She came into her own and made the most of, made the most of what she was given and now uses every bit of that to give back to her own. And it is my privilege and my honor to introduce my younger sister, this year's, this year's honoree, Crystal Kemp. Well, 
thank you. Um, <clears throat> about the hot dog story, um, you just can't hold the condiments the same if you don't have a bottom. So I figured I needed to go ahead and take that away from our brother since they had a little bit more experience with the hot dog. So um, luckily a couple of tears opted for me to have the, the complete hot dog bun. But I am extremely honored and blessed to be here. First, I'd just like to thank God because without him, I wouldn't be. Uh, second of all, to the other Hall of Fame inductees, um, Chris, your incredible career with bowling and I can only imagine you guys settling some arguments on the bowling alley, you and your beautiful wife here. And Coach Kevin over at Washburn Rural, I can remember being ready to play you guys. You guys were always a tough competition for us. And here lately, the past few years, watching you guys beat up on the Trojans for the championship was a little bit heartaching, but congratulations to you. And then to Mr. Peterson over here, who's written several articles about me, I appreciate your kind words and giving recognition. Your face is on lots of the clippings my mother has clipped out and hung out throughout um, high school and in the home. So second of all, um, just congratulations to all the nominees as well, the, the high school athletes. I, I've been in your shoes and I know the hard work and dedication it takes and you know, continue to be an, um, an example for our younger generation and congratulations to those of you who won. So I just, there's so many people I could thank. Um, I'm gonna go through a little line of my coaches. Uh, starting in, in middle school with Coach Stroud, uh, I was excited to play for Coach Stroud back at Robinson Middle School. And then once I got up to T uh, Topeka High with Coach Soldina, and then uh, Coach Zimmerman came in and um, continued to mentor me as well. And once I got ready for college, and then my choice was the University of Kansas for very many reasons. One of the main reasons being Coach Washington and just loving on her and just, I, I just saw the relationship that she had with her players and the respect that they had and the culture and everything at KU. And it was something I wanted to definitely embody and be an example as well. And then of course, Miss Lynette Woodard, who I admired and loved dearly and just to be able to be in the same place uh, playing with her in the historic Allen Fieldhouse was just, I mean, there was really no no choice there but to go ahead and, and choose to be a Jayhawk. But all of them have contributed to my, to mentoring me, to my abilities and, and giving me the confidence and ability to go out and play hard. And I can remember my freshman year being excited about going to the University of Kansas. And while I was excited and I knew I had talent, I was 100% okay being a bench warmer my freshman year. I was like, I will go and get the towels and the Gatorades and just be the best cheerleader on the bench. I'm just glad to be here, you know? And so getting the opportunity to go out there and play and start as a freshman, um, of course it was an attribute to my hard work and ethic, but it also just let me know that I could do this and I, I had the tools to go out and be successful there at KU. And um, I, I'm just very proud of all of the support that I received. There's a table back there that just has Crystal Kemp at it. And I mean, the people at that table, Coach LaHood, who was just as um, loud and crazy. And uh, it actually gave me a little bit of comfort once I got to KU to just see her and her encouragement and things along those lines. But just the best supporters at the University of Kansas and then the people who have come to be here to support me. I'm gonna name each and every one of them because they're all very important to me. But to my TT here, she has taken me under her wing and just been a great role model for me. My nieces, Chrislyn and Kimmy, who have, you know, I've watched grow up and my niece is now playing basketball and aspiring to do great things. My sister-in-law, Nikita, who, you know, we have a wonderful banter back and forth about just about everything and uh, love her to death. She has to deal with my brother, so bless her. Um, <laughs> but I love him. I love him. And of course, to my brother, uh, who, you know, we had some good fights coming up. We had some good battles on the court and things like that, but I wouldn't trade our relationship for the world. And I appreciate you and I love you dearly. And to my best friend, Dorian, who this guy here, we've known each other since sixth grade. and. He's been my basketball buddy. He's been my athletic buddy. We used to go back and forth about our grades, like seeing what, who, who got what and things like that. And we kept pushing each other academically as well as in the sports world. And then my best friend, Stephanie here, who uh, you know, was probably one of the better javelin throwers out there, but 
That's a little bit of an inside joke. She hit her head and, uh, <laughs> with the javelin at a meet, but it was her best throw yet. So, I mean, just for that memory there, I mean, I appreciate her. But she has been my rock throughout all of this, and I love her dearly. dearly. And her mother, who has been like a second mother to me, Miss Carter, um, who has been a mom to many uh, throughout Topeka High and other students and kids coming up. And then I have my Aunt Becky here, and this woman here is who I wanted to emulate growing up. She's been an educator for over 40 years in the state of Texas, and um, she, she's just amazing. And then my Aunt Brenda here also, another woman of strength who I looked up to, just the resilience that she's had through things in life and just the best supporter as well. And I appreciate them making the trip from Texas coming down. And then to my wonderful kids, um, my son Dion, who's 12. And if you have had or are a 12 year old boy, you can understand that. And so now after being here and hearing about my accolades and things, I hope he understands that when I'm trying to teach him, he, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so. Hopefully now he can see, okay, mom knows a little bit so I can listen. Um, so I'm hoping that he can uh, take that with him next time we get on the court. And to my beautiful daughter here who I just love so much, not that I don't love my son, but um, whenever you have someone who says they want to be just like you, um, it just does something to your heart. And so to see her want to play basketball, now let me tell you, she started out wanting to just do dance. <laughs> I am not a dance mom, <laughs> but I was going to be for the, a couple of years she did it because she did not want to play basketball at all. And then the moment she said, Mom, I'm ready to try basketball, you know, God is good, isn't he? <laughs> so we threw away the leotards and put on some basketball shoes, and I have been happy ever since. But... <laughs> Uh, a lot of people who know or don't know, um, I've gone through a lot of adversity coming up and um, there was a lot of things that I needed to drive me and the people who are here and other people who are not here were definitely inspiration to me. But I just wanted to end with a couple of things and just to let you guys know that I am an image. I'm an image of favor, I'm an image of grace, I'm an image of beauty, and I'm an image of forgiveness. I'm also an image of resilience and an image of growth. I'm an image in God's eyes and he did this. And with every imperfect, perfect aspect of my being, I am internally thankful and grateful for this nomination and induction in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. And thank you to the committee. And I appreciate it all. And just more importantly, thank you all for being here and supporting me in my journey. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Topeka's newest Hall of Famer, Crystal Kemp. All right, time to move on to our spring nominees for Female and Male Athletes of the Year. First off on the ladies' side, from Hayden High School, Noelia Cruz, Ariana and Antonio are parents. She helped Hayden to a third place finish in the 4 through 1A state tournament this spring, received all Shawnee County first team recognition, was named Hayden most valuable player. She's an outstanding work ethic, great role model for a younger player, certainly makes our team better when she is on the field, said Klaus Kreitzer. Her leadership on the field and at practice and in games contributed greatly to our success. Uh, she is also in top soccer, which works with children with special needs. She has made Hayden a better place, and she certainly will be missed. Noelia Cruz from Hayden High School. From Highland Park, Zuli Henderson. She's a three-year starter, letter winner for the Scots. Colin Moriarty said she worked hard since day one and was voted team captain, played almost all the minutes this season. Uh, Hernandez played 1,200 plus minutes this spring, received second team all Metal Art Conference honors, all Shawnee County honorable mention. She'll attend Wichita State from Highland Park, Zuli Hernandez. <laughs> from Rossville, Brindley Deitch in softball. 
She was uh, picked up all three pitching wins in the 3A state softball tournament at Rossville, captured its first state championship since 2000. She received first team all 3A and all Shawnee County honors as a senior, received all Mideast League recognition all three seasons. She's a great team leader and has been for a couple of years now, said John Nitch, her coach. She was part of her team getting two regional and then a fourth at state last year and a 3A state title this year. Not only does she excel on the softball field, she is anything she is involved in, including her academics. She'll really be missed. She was 11-3 in 2023 with a 2386 ERA from Rossville, Brindley Deitch. <laughs> from Seaman High School, Bethany Drews in track and field. Bethany, a leader in every sense of the word, said Seaman track and field coach Rick Brading. She wants the hard work because she knows it makes her faster. She brings other athletes along for the ride and raises their expectations. She is not satisfied with an average performance. She posted a fastest 5A time in the 800 the past two seasons, winning the 5A title in 2022, finishing second in 23. She set a city meet record in the 1600 this past season, placed fifth at state in the 800 and 1600 as a sophomore, was a three-time state medalist, 5A cross country meet. She will run cross country and track and field at KU. From Seaman, Bethany Drews. From Topeka High, Addison Carroll. She helped Topeka High win back-to-back -back 6A softball championships in 21 and 22 as a three-time All-Centennial League, All-Shawnee County, All-6A honoree. She has been an integral part of changing the culture of female athletes at Topeka High, said softball coach Shane Miles. Her leadership on and off the field and the courts is beyond reproach. Not only did Addison lead the school in the, as the valedictorian and class president for four years, she exhibited the same leadership in sports and she was a 6A qualifier in tennis, part of the Trojan basketball program that made three state appearances from Topeka High, Addison Carroll. <laughs> from Topeka West, Amia Thurman, first and foremost, I'd like to say that she is the truest definition of a student athlete, said softball coach Matt Gil Gilbreth. She was a, sal a salutatorian of her graduating class, was a member of the National Honor Society, has been an award-winning long list of scholarships due to her work and dedication in the classroom and community. The same drive that propels her in the classroom serves her just as well on the softball field. She plans to attend Arizona State, Amia Thurman from Topeka West. And from Washburn Rural, Emerson Cope in the sport of softball. She put together one of the top careers in rural history, helping lead the Junior Blues to three state appearances, back-to-back runner-up finishes in 6A as a junior and senior. She hit 588 this past season, 15 homers, 41 RBI, 12-2 and two record in the circle, 1.5 ERA, 142 strikeouts, named Centennial League Player of the Year as a junior and senior, and Shawnee County Player of the Year as a senior after sharing that honor as a junior. She'll play collegiately at Nebraska from Washburn Rural, Emerson Cope. And our spring female athlete of the year is from Rossville, Brindley Deitch. Well, congratulations. Uh, what does it mean to you to be uh, amongst a group of great athletes, the one that was picked as the spring female athlete of the year? Um, it means a lot to know that all your hard work can pay off. So, softball, when did it start for you? Um, a long, when I was like four. <laughs> we played for a long time. It's a lot of softball. That means mom and dad have hauled you all over the country. Yes, and a lot of money spent. <laughs> so they're looking for payback. Now, so what about, what about collegiately? No, I am not continuing my sophomore mm -hmm. career, but I am coming here to Washburn. All right, going to be in Ichabod. Congratulations on being the female athlete in the spring. Yep, yep. Now, we had a tie for this uh, event this year, and so our second honoree is Emerson Cope from Washburn Rural, and do we have someone here to accept that award, Rick? Yes, all right. Uh, and so, we, we, again, we had a tie in this honor. Emerson Cope from Washburn Rural, um, again, going to play collegiately at Nebraska, is already off and, and rolling 12-2 um, and two in the circle. Uh, just a, a phenomenal career at Washburn Rural. But I know uh, exciting for you to tell her that she won, I'm sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure just giving her a phone call here in Colorado right now. She's off playing right this weekend. Yeah, and that never stops, does it? No, not at all. She's been off every day this summer just doing all sorts of things and playing her heart out. Well, I know her dad pretty well, and I just know his drive, and I'm sure the two of you have given her that drive as well. Yeah, so um, every day between um, her family, her teammates, she's just driven to keep pushing and working hard. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Emerson Cope from Washburn Rowan. Ladies, thank you so much. Our honorees for Spring Female Athlete of the Year. Now up for the Spring Male Athletes of the Year. First up from Hayden High School, Jake Muller. He won three gold medals, 2023 4A State Track and Field Championship, four state titles in his career, earning eight state medals, four sport athlete at Hayden. Soccer, cross country, basketball, track and field, two-time state champ in the 300 hurdles, was a member of the Wildcats 4x1 and 4x4, including a 4A state meet record in the 4x4. Jake is everyone, every coach's dream student athlete, said Dewan Gardenhier. The way Jake can lead a team and perform on the course, on the field, on the track, uh, the best I've seen in my coaching career, it's been an honor. He will compete right here at Washburn in track and field from Hayden High School, Jake Muller. From Highland Park, Trey Richardson in track and field. Trey ended his outstanding multi-sport career at, at Highland Park with a 33-point effort in the 5A state track and field championships, winning a pair of state titles, adding second and fourth place finishes, led the Scots to a ninth place team finish, outscoring 22 other 5A schools by himself. Trey is a leader in the classroom, also on the field, on the court, on the track, said Freddie Ma Maysberger. He has been involved throughout his high school career, participating in three sports and sometimes even four, including baseball. He strives to be the best, challenges himself in all he does. He'll play collegiately in football at Hutchinson Community College. Trey Richardson from Highland Park. From Seaman High School, Bryson Vodder in the sport of baseball, a three-year standout for the Seaman baseball, led the Vikings to three straight 5A state tournament appearances, posted a career pitching record of 12 and 4, 1.24 ERA, 138 strikeouts, hit 412, 26 doubles, three home runs, 72 ribbies. Bryson made a huge impact within our baseball program, said Seaman coach Trent Olivia. He came into the varsity role the sophomore year and missing out as a freshman because of COVID. He made his impact without hardly playing any sub-varsity baseball. He will play collegiately at KCK Community College from Seaman, Bryson Vodder. From Shawnee Heights, Alex Valdivia in the sport of golf. He was a United Kansas Conference individual champ as a junior and senior, also shot 72 in terrible weather conditions to win the 5A regional title, led Shawnee Heights to the regional team championship by 26 strokes. He capped his high school career with a 12th place tie in the 2023 5A state tournament. It's been an amazing uh, to watch Alex grow and excel in golf, said head coach Jane Yee. Uh, he also was a positive and supportive team captain. He'll play collegiately for Bubba McHenry right here at Washburn University. From Shawnee Heights, Alex Valdivia. From Topeka High, Elijah Kincaid. He was a standout catcher as part of Topeka High's baseball team that ended a state tournament drought of more than seven decades. Hit 413 as a senior, eight doubles, one home run, 24 RBI. Elijah was our captain, helped us lead our uh, team to state for the first time in 75 years, head head coach and athletic director Cody Miller. Kincaid earned all Shawnee County, all Centennial League honors. He'll play collegiately at Allen County. From Topeka High, Elijah Kincaid. From Topeka West, we've got the twins, Ian Cusick and Miles Cusick. We'll start with Ian, earned the, of course, he and his twin brother, Miles, posted a 104 and, one, uh, 104 and 14 career doubles record, capturing back-to-back 5A -back state doubles championships, 22 and 23. After losing their freshman season to COVID, the Cusicks went 29 and 6 as sophomore, 37 and 4 as juniors, 38 and 4 as seniors. Ian and Miles placed ninth in the state tournament in 2021 before claiming two state titles. The Cusicks led Topeka West to a second place team finish in 2022 before leading the Chargers to the first ever boys team title this past spring. Miles swept city centennial regional state championships as a junior and senior, and they are both members of the National Honor Society, Ian and Miles Cusick. Now, how about this? 
Ian is attending KU, Miles is attending K-State. <laughs> From Topeka West, Ian and Miles Cusick. And from Washburn Rural, Mason Casebeer in tennis. Mason capped a 27 and 6 senior season with a ninth place singles finish in the 6A state tennis tournament. He was the city runner up, number one singles, won the Centennial League and regional championships, three time state qualifier, two time state medalist, earning a 12th place finish, state doubles finish as a sophomore. His knowledge of the game and the effort that he puts into it are exemplary, said head coach Brad Johnston. He is the first one to pick up a teammate or want to hit with someone. He not only excels on the court, but in the classroom. He is an excellent example of a student athlete. He'll attend the University of Kansas. Mason Casebeer from Washburn Rural. And our Spring Male Athlete of the Year, it's the Cusicks. Come on up, Ian and Miles. All right, I gotta ask, so what was the decision that you guys didn't go to the same collegiate school? So you first. Um, I think I was just drawn to KU, just I really like the culture there, very winning school. Um, and I just love the campus. I don't know, I was just very drawn to KU. You realize he gets last word to your thoughts. What, were you, what was your reason? Yeah, it, it just seemed like the community at K-State was really nice and the family atmosphere, um, that's something I really liked about it. By the way, this, this looks better on you, I think, purple. <laughs> um, no, it, it, talk about the tennis career. Just what you guys shared uh, had to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, there's just no substitute for hard work, and we put in so much work together through the years. Um, had a very good coach in high school, lots of good coaches together, and I don't know, it's just really great to share that experience with him. And you didn't get the, I mean, no athlete in this room got a COVID year. I mean, that was, you know, again, we all went through that. But then what you guys reeled off, only losing 14 times, what a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, yeah, I think especially just not playing our freshman year, it just made us that, that much more eager to get on the court and uh, show other people what we can do. Um, I think it was a really good motivator for us. Congratulations, guys. Ian and Miles Cusick, Vega West, our spring male athletes of the year. And gentlemen, thank you for being honored as our male honorees. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, as we move on, we want to thank uh, TopSports.News. Now, obviously, this was a, a venture um, locally to try and keep, you know, local sports being covered uh, as, as we love it to be. And Bill and Rick, who are largely behind everything that goes on with TopSports.News, last year at this time, they had just under 900,000 visits to the site and 2.5 and million page views. As of June 20th, they have over 1.75 million visits to the site and over 6.4 million page views. Uh, congratulations, TopSports.News. And without them, this banquet, this honoring would not continue. So we do appreciate uh, your efforts in continuing this, this venture for Topeka and Shawnee County. We'd like to uh, recognize our partners tonight, the University of Kansas Health System, St. Francis Campus, with their partnership tonight. They continue their commitment. If, if someone from St. Francis could come up, uh, as e we recognize each one of them, we have something for you here tonight. Uh, they continue to evolve and serve the future generations here in Topeka. We welcome and thank uh, Terry Benson, marketing and planning strategist, who is with us here tonight. University of Kansas Health System, St. Francis. A1 Lock and Key, the only brick and mortar locksmith serving Topeka for over 60 years. A1's third year of supporting the student athletes and the Hall of Famers. And we thank owner Dana Hall for his continued support. A1 Lock and Key. Washburn University, want to thank Premier D2 School and Pride of Topeka, Washburn, for their support and enjoying this event right here on their campus. Gene Castle is here to represent Washburn's athletic department tonight, and we thank the entire Ichabod family for supporting Washburn University. <laughs> Did you want Joy to pick that up since her, you know, she's finishing up this week? All right, next up, Peggy's Tax and Accounting. Peggy Vesterfield has been a community partner uh, the last three years, unable to join us tonight. We want to recognize her and send our thanks for continued support, Peggy's Tax and Accounting. 
Capital Label, we'd like to recognize owner Randy Arnold, Capital Label, a third year partner. They uh, produce all kinds of labels, not just here in Topeka, not just in the state, but all around the world. Capital Label. State Farm Agent Jamie Hornbaker. Jamie's not able to be with us this evening. We recognize her and her team as they are involved with many community events and are happy to join us this year as a partner. And Jay, yes, please, go ahead. <laughs> JML Engraving, Melissa and Mike Bame have joined us this year as awards partners with uh, locations in Linden and Manhattan and soon Topeka. They help you celebrate all your victories in life. JML Engraving. At this time, we would like to uh, bestow a, a special surprise award, and it comes to a Hall of Fame couple that's pretty important right here to Washburn University. Bill and Kathy McDonald, could you please come up? At this time, we want to take a minute to recognize and thank Bill and Kathy. They have been continued exceptional supporters for this event and so many things in Topeka, both educators, uh, and they've come back to Topeka after a time in Michigan, and they do everything around town. For many years now, this is the third that they've supported TopSports.News. Bill and Kathy individually have been so generous, and we want to thank this Hall of Fame couple tonight, Bill and Kathy McDonald. <laughs> thank you. We have a special recognition tonight. We want to celebrate a longtime teacher and administrator so many of you know him, from Topeka West, the pride of the Charger Dome, Richard Mariani. Rich, we want to recognize you. He retired earlier this month after a distinguished 33-year career at Topeka West as a teacher, as a coach. He was involved on the table at basketball games. He was all over the place. Most recently, he served as Charger Athletic Director. Please help us in giving Rich a great send-off, a round of applause, 33 years of service to Topeka and the Charger Dome, Rich Mariani. And finally, we want to recognize each week during the year, TopSports.News has partnered with Farmers Insurance Agent Dan Key, who is here tonight. Uh, and they recognize rising stars. This weekly feature shined the spotlight on underclassmen's performances throughout the school year. Over 50 student athletes were featured and attended a season ending awards banquet. And at that banquet, rising star athletes of the year were selected, and they are with us tonight. If they would please stand and be recognized, on the lady side, Lauren Sandstrom. On the guy side, Jackson Escabel. Thank you. Keep looking for those rising stars on topsports.news. It's time to name our Washburn honorees, and uh, the male and female athletes of the year is selected by topsports.news. The honorees are All-America softball player J.C. Ginter and All-American football player Grant Bruner. Ginter, yes, please. <laughs> J.C. was a first... Ichabod, to receive first team National Fast Pitch Coaches Association All-America honors, earned the D2 CCA All-America, became the third Ichabod softball player to earn MIAA Player of the Year, unanimous first team All-Conference, finished the year 30-7 and seven with the Ichabod single season best win total, struck out 290 and 234 in the third innings. At the plate, she hit 385, 10 homers, second best on the team, and a team best 57 RPI. She's a former Shawnee Height T-Bird and a three-time first team all MIAA selection, Washburn's J.C. Ginter. And I'll have you both come up here in a minute. Grant Bruner is the uh, male athlete of the year, a native of Gretna, Nebraska, which if you don't know is in the Omaha area. He led the Ichabods and the MIAA and, oh, by the way, the nation in tackles, 137, 80 were solo, averaged 12 and a half tackles per game. Uh, was Associated Press D2 Conference Commissioner Association First Team All-America, 137 tackles, third best in school history. He is a six-time member of the MIAA Academic Honor Roll, two-time All-MIAA performer, Grant Bruner. Come on up. Jace, just want to ask you, 
Uh, obviously, coming out of Shawnee Heights, you had a myriad of places you could have played. Why was it that Washburn became the place that you wanted to kind of plant your softball flag? I love the family atmosphere we have here, and it's really close to home. So I like being close to my family and being able to have them come watch me play. Yeah, you know, mom and dad probably appreciated getting to watch, you know, a good number of your games right here in your backyard. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. So uh, tell me just about, uh, you, know, uh, you know, your career, uh, because it's encompassed a lot of softball from the time you were little right on up. So what has driven you? Uh, probably my very first softball coach, Scott Dial. He kind of pushed me in the right direction, got me where I am today. Most memorable in your softball career? Mm, club ball all throughout growing up, for sure. Congratulations, J.C. Ginter. Grant, come on over. Third best total in school history. And, you know, I know your defensive coordinator, Zach Watkins, you and he are about the same stature, both tenacious. I mean, third best tackle total in school history. What does that mean to you? Uh, it's pretty nice. You know, I was lucky to have a lot of good teammates around me, good coaching staff. And you mentioned Coach Watkins. He, uh, when I first came down here on a visit, he was kind of the guy that, you know, I wanted to emulate my game after he came in as a walk-on like me and um, didn't ever beat his record, obviously. That one's going to be tough to, to ever beat, but no, pretty, pretty grateful. And you were a walk-on, and then you earned your way. What did that mean to you personally? Uh, it means a lot. Um, just being able to, to show that I work hard and all that stuff. You know, my parents are here, my brothers are here. Um, they, uh, they taught me a lot about hard work growing up. Obviously, my brother's beating up on me a little bit, being the younger brother. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, you know, just a good moment to show how far I've been able to come. So. As you've heard, that's a common theme with brothers and sisters in the room. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. J.C. Ginter, Grant Bruner, Female and Male Athletes of the Year here at Washburn. Well, it's time for our final Hall of Famer. He is no stranger to anyone in this room, but he's probably the guy that fears what he's going to do the most. Rick Peterson's not a guy that wants to stand up in front of a crowd and talk, but I'm going to guess he has something to say that is going to grab our attention tonight. And there's nobody that knows him better. You know, he's known as Pistol, so we'll go to the pop gun to introduce him tonight. His son, Ricky, who followed in his dad's footsteps uh, as a sports writer at the Topeka Capital Journal, the Hayes Daily News, and he is currently a staff writer for the High School Activities Association, the KSH SAA Covered, to introduce us to our next Hall of Famer, please welcome Ricky Peterson. Well, it's safe to say that pretty much everybody in this room, you know, knows my dad's work. Um, you guys know his strengths just as much as I do. Um, he builds great relationships with the athletes he's covered. He builds great relationships with the coaches. Uh, he's a tremendous, new, he can break news with the best of them. He's so positive in everything he writes. Um, when we're talking about his strengths, I would not say that social media knowledge and technology would be, would be some, on the, very high on the list. Uh, you know, that brings me back to when he announced that he was uh, call it, you could call it retirement, but it really wasn't a retire retirement because he continues to write this day. But when he was stepping away from the Capitol Journal uh, to, to, you know, to join Bill Griffin in, the, in this great venture at topsports.news, uh, you know, he just put out a little tweet and said, you know, hey, you know, it's been a great ride. Uh, looking forward to the next step. And I know he was blown away and I was blown away by the social media response from everybody who wished him well and talked about what he meant to, you know, what he's meant to this community. And, you know, I was reading all this and I, I was really moved by a lot of it. And I called him to make sure that he saw this. And he said, yeah, you know, I've, I've been reading it. Everything's great. I, it, it makes me feel really good. But he said, you know, one thing I don't understand, a lot of these people, they're putting a little symbol of like a little gray dog by, by, by everything. And I looked at it, I was like, what the heck is he talking about? And it was a goat emoji. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, had to, I had to explain, I, you know, I had to explain that. That's, you know, greatest of, of, of all time. That, that's what that means. Uh, you know, and then we're, we're talking about, 
when we're talking about greatest of all time, you know, he would be the first one to tell you that he's he's not any more of a goat than the people he's he's worked with. Um, the Capital Journal has just put had so many iconic sports writers throughout the years. Uh, Pete Gehring, Kevin Haskin, Alan Quakenbush, Rick Dean, Ken Corbett, Tim, uh, Tim Beisel, Brent Maycock, Jim, Jim Ramberg, uh, Pam Clark, and uh, I'm sorry, I know I'm forgetting some people, so I'm sorry if I forget forgot anybody, but uh, obviously the, the goat of all goats, I think all, all my former newspaper people would agree, was Bob, was Bob Henson, who's, who's in the Hall of Fame. But, uh, you know, I think each one of them, you know, had had qualities that made the Topeka Capital Journal sports pages. I, you know, I know I'm biased, but I think it was the best sports section in the state for a long, long time because they all, you know, had their specific strengths that that made it such a great, great newspaper. Um, you know, a little a little bit of background on my dad. Uh, he's a Kansas City, Kansas native, Wyandotte graduate, uh, Southwestern College graduate. Uh, you know, his previous stops were at the Baldwin newspaper and then uh, the Ottawa Herald. He joined the Capital Journal staff in 1989. Um, during his time there, uh, he's a five-time Kansas Sports Writer uh, of the Year, uh, two-time Oscar Stauffer Sports Writer of the Year, and he, he's racked up, um, you know, about, I think about 20 awards um, through his time as a, as a sports writer. Um, you know, when, when talking about how he operates, um, I think this speaks a lot about him, you know, every, at the start of every high school season, he, he'd make a handwritten spreadsheet of every team that was going to compete that, that season, and he would check them off. You know, no matter how bad they were, he would, he would want to write at least one story about every team. And, you know, that, that mindset is not with uh, a lot of sports journalism today. That's not how it works. They don't make sure they cover all the bases. They want to write, you know, one feature story. And, and get a lot of clicks. And I think that's what's great about topsports.news is he's, he's keeping that same approach and covering as, as, just as much as he can. Uh, you know, I think, I think most of the people here uh, would say that nobody has better relationships with their coaches than my dad. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that he's not gonna have to write a hard story every now and then, but everybody trusts Everybody trusts him. Um, you know, everybody lets them lets him get an inside peek at their program. Um, you know, I think something that speaks volumes about the relationship he's built with coaches is that he's uh, presented four Hall of Famers, four, four Hall of Famers him, himself. He they asked my dad to present them, and uh, I know uh, three of them to, are here tonight: and Coach Meski, uh, Coach Darting, and, and Coach Strog, uh, and. One thing that I, I really admired about him is he will never call a high school kid out. He, you know, he will go out of his way to make sure that he doesn't speak poorly in it, about a high school kid. You know, if somebody dropped a key pass, if somebody made a key turnover, he would write around it to make sure that kid, you know, didn't read the paper and feel bad about himself. And that's, I think, that's just such a great trait to have. Uh, you know, outside of Outside of work, uh, he's still a kid at heart. He's been a kid at heart his entire life. Um, when I was a kid, we used to fight over the TV on the, before school. I would want to watch Sports Center, and he would want to watch Nickelodeon and SpongeBob and, <laughs> and, and, and Rugrats. I'll tell you, you know, he's he's talked to some heavy hitters throughout his career, some uh, some real famous race car drivers and, and athletes of all types. Uh, one day he was covering a race at the Kansas Speedway, and I could tell he talked to somebody I, I thought really important. He was excited. He said, you'll never believe who I just, who I just talked to. And I said, who, I'm thinking like Joe Gibbs, Richard Petty, somebody like that. And he said, the guy who voices Squidward on SpongeBob. <laughs> um, and it... Also, if you know my dad, you probably know his home away from home is Las Vegas. Uh, he's never been happier than when he's at a video poker machine. Um, and kind of a cool story, uh, you know, we, we make a habit of going to Vegas uh, every summer. A lot of times Kevin Haskin will join and Bill Griffin will join. And 
actually the conception uh, of topsports.news happened in, in Las Vegas. They were just, you know, eating dinner and, and talking about how, you know, things were starting to look bad in the industry. And Bill Griffin, I can't credit, credit him enough, he had this idea, um, you know, he saw a void and he saw how, how much Topeka loves its sports and, and, and he launched this. And I can't, I can't thank Bill enough for what he's done with topsports.news. Um, you know, it's called, they called it scrapbook, scrapbook journalism. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of got a derogatory term, but when I think about scrapbook journalism and, you know, how cool is it that my dad's byline is in probably hundreds of, of scrapbooks, you know, around Kansas. I think, I think it's something that, I think that kind of journalism is, so, is sorely missed today, and it, it's cool that he's been able to kind of keep that, that tradition going. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, wrap it up with this. Um, you know, kind of going back to that day where he announced that he was going to step to step over to topsports.news and, and step away from the Capital Journal. Uh, Rick Dean, who's a legendary sports writer, uh, you know, he I thought he kind of summed it up the best. And he said, high school athletes in Topeka have never known a better friend than Rick, Rick Peterson. And I, I just think, I think that's what makes him a Hall of Famer. If you're an athlete in, in Topeka and Rick Peterson is the reporter, you know you're gonna get the coverage you deserve and the attention you deserve. And um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to the original Rick Peterson. Maycock, how about that? <laughs> I got to tell you, um, this is not in my comfort zone at all. But it's a lot more in my comfort zone than it is this young man over here. <laughs> and we were so worried about this. And his sister Courtney and, and <laughs> Brent Maycock, who he works with now, Acacia Covered, that we had a standby. My good friend, we call him uh, Uncle Earl. He's known Ricky his whole life. And we had a standby just in case that Ricky wanted to, to opt out of that. <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, can we please give him a sign of I mean, I tell you, he did a great job. <laughs> you know, I always tell him that, uh, well, I made a lot of mistakes as a father, but definitely, one of them was naming him Junior. And I didn't, I didn't really think it was a mistake until we got into the same business. And I can't tell you how many times I get his phone messages, he gets my phone messages, I get his email, and, and, and it's just, but, uh, and the other thing is probably I need to uh, apologize for getting him in the sports right. <laughs> he, could, he could have gone and did something and made a little money and things like that, but he never had a chance. He grew up in a gym with me, and, uh, and he never, never got out. So uh, I want to thank the, uh, the committee for picking me. I'm not real happy with them, but, uh, <laughs> but I am very, very, very honored, and uh, especially to go in with uh, uh, Chris Barnes. I mean, he's a legend. Crystal Kemp. Legend, Kevin Bordewick, man, he's all right. <laughs> but, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very, very honored to go in with these other three people. And uh, I also want to uh, introduce my family that's here. Uh, my wife, Linda, uh, couldn't make it tonight, but she's uh, been a very, very big influence in my life uh, for 21 years. Uh, my three stepsons, uh, uh, Jake, Zach, and Luke, are very, very important to me. Uh, my daughter, uh, Courtney, is here, right down by Ricky, and Jameson. They are very important to me. And then, little Jesse Ray, six months old. I, I do want to announce his recruitment is officially open. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, just get a hold of me. Uh, we're, we're also looking into the transfer portal, so, <laughs> so, but uh, we'll we'll get that we'll get that done. Uh, 
Ricky, Ricky already talked about these guys, but uh, the guys I worked with at the Capitol Journal, I mean, they were as good as gold. And I think we, one, we shared a love for sports, and Capitol Journal always, going back to Bob Henson and Pete Gehring, uh, Pete Gehring's who hired me, uh, they always treated high school sports with a great deal of interest, and it made it a priority. And I think, uh, but the guys that I worked with, they're all just as deserving of being up here as, as I am. Uh, I also want to, Bill Kentling is here tonight. Uh, he was one of my absolute heroes. He was a freaking commissioner of the major indoor soccer league. He ran Heartland Park when we brought in Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt and all those greats to this town. Um, and he was a sports editor at, uh, at Wichita and in California when, when newspapers were a big deal. And so I've always kind of, uh, he's kind of been one of my mentors and I have a, a lot of mentors from this business. Um, but I, uh, I also, this room is filled with heroes of mine. I mean, uh, I was so excited when I heard that Ben Meske, uh, the Hayden uh, legend, was gonna come down. And, and Ricky said, Ricky said, t said that I introduced Ben and Kenny Darting and, and Joe for the Hall of Fame. And having them here for my induction uh, means an awful lot to me. Uh, I also, there's a lot of athletes in this room that I cover. And I don't know if that just means I'm really old or, or what. But I mean, I, I, I look out there and there's a lot of friendly faces out there. And I, I really do appreciate that. And uh, they made the coaches and the athletes, the athletic directors have all made my job easy. I mean, it's, you can't do it without everybody that's involved. Um, my, fr my good friend Stacy Kramer is here tonight, and he's done amazing things with the Topeka Golf Association, Amateur Golf. But a couple weeks ago, he says, I bet you just have some really good stories you can tell. And I thought about that, and I thought, yeah, I, I do. But about 90% of them, I can't tell. <laughs> some of the best stories are the ones you can't tell. Hell, I could, I could tell 15 Rick Bloomquist stories right now, 15 Ken Darling stories right now. But we'd probably all end up in trouble. So, but I, I do have a couple I want to tell. And uh, my dear daughter, Courtney, who never met a person she didn't like, but when they were young kids, I, I drug them with me, Ricky and, and Courtney, to games with me a lot because that was probably gonna be the only time I was gonna see them. So we're at, Leavenworth High School and watching Highland Park when they were, I mean, well, still really, really good. And they were really, really good then. And Ken Darting was the head coach. And this is a sweet little girl that likes everybody. And she turns to me and she says, I don't like Ken Darting. She, <laughs> says, she says, all he does is yell. Okay, so Ricky and I immediately, and I want to say, the Darting family has treated the Peterson family like gold. But anyway, so Ricky and I immediately we would start trying to convince her that, no, he's really a nice guy. He's just doing stuff to get his attention. And I thought we were making some headway. And about that time, one of his players throws up like a 25-footer, uh, ill-advised. Didn't come close to going in. And all of a sudden, we're like three rows behind the bench. And all of a sudden, Darting goes off and starts just screaming at this kid. And this kid said, and one of his better players, too. Uh, and he just starts screaming at him. And this kid says, but coach, coach, I was wide open. And Darting didn't miss a beat. 
Of course you were open. You can't shoot. <laughs> and, and, and so, so I think Courtney, who's a mother now and all this, I think, I think she understands that, you know. But I, I thought, now, my other story, and this is probably, this started, this coming high school season will be my 45th. And this is probably my favorite story of all time. And it was actually when I was at the Auto Herald, and I believe it was uh, 1986, right before the Super Bowl between the uh, New England Patriots and the Chicago Bears. And I was at Ottawa, as I said, and uh, one of their legends, Steve Grogan, was a great player at Kansas State, was a very, had a very long, distinguished career in the NFL with the Patriots, and he was getting ready to go to the Super Bowl with the Patriots. Well, this was an Ottawa kid, to everybody knew him, everybody knew his parents, and I really thought, hey, if I'm doing my due diligence, I gotta get a hold of this guy and do a story before the Super Bowl. So I reached out to Patriots. I, I got shot down in about 15 seconds. We had like a, a circulation of like 5,800, and they, they you know, said, hey, he's a quarterback of the Patriots. He said, we got all this stuff going, national media. You're not going to get him. So I thought about it, and I was disappointed. And I did know his parents a little bit. And I called his mom, and this is for all the moms out there. I called his mom, Doris Grogan, and I said, hey, I know, I know this is a long shot, but if you happen to talk to Steve, can you see if maybe he can give me a call so I can do a story leading into the Super Bowl? She said, well, yeah, I don't know when I'll talk to him, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. So I hung up the phone, not, not holding much hope, you know, because he was very busy and the team was very busy. I leave my desk, walk back to the back of the Ottawa Herald where the, uh, where the vending machines were, put my money in to get a Pepsi, they yell out, this was before cell phones and <laughs> texts and all that. And somebody yells back at me and says, Rick, you have a phone call. So I went back to my desk, picked up my phone, said, Rick, this is Steve Grogan. Mom said I was supposed to call. <laughs> So I, I love dads, I love coaches, but if I really need anything, I'm going to the moms. So, hey, it's been a great 44 years. I hope at least I got a little bit left in the tank. Uh, whenever anybody sends me a compliment, and as you can imagine, not a, sports writers don't get a lot of those, but when everybody, any time anybody gives me a compliment on a story, I always just put two words, my pleasure. And this career has truly been my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, your newest Topeka Shawnee County Hall of Famer, Rick Peterson. All right, we're going to honor our inspirational female and male athletes. We'll start with the ladies. First up from Hayden High School, Alyssa Drogi. She battled through knee injuries, three of them. She fought cancer and put together an outstanding softball career. She suffered an ACL injury as a freshman, then again as a sophomore, and then had a third slight ACL and meniscus tear in July of last year. In August of 21, she was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, resulting in a six-month chemotherapy. She officially began remission in January of 22. Alyssa is not only a leader on the field, but she also is a constant inspiration for our entire program, said Cody Reynolds. I get goosebumps, and it makes me emotional because I'm really close with her, and I'm really close with her family. From Hayden High School, Alyssa Drogi. From Seaman Laney Brown. Brown, an emotional leader for the Seaman volleyball team, posted back-to-back fourth-place finishes in 5A. 
Laney, dedicated athlete at, at Seaman and a leader of our program this year, said Tatiana Dowling, she never misses a workout, holds her teammates to an extremely high standard. She exhibits excellence on and off the court. Her go-getter attitude will take her far into the future. Brown will play collegiately at Butler County Community College. Laney Brown from Seaman. Emery Doby from Shawnee Heights. She fought all the way back from serious knee injury to earn a Division I scholarship at Denver University after playing time as a freshman for the T-Birds. She missed her entire sophomore year and the following summer season after suffering an ACL tear just before the start of uh, preseason practice 2020-2021 season. She suffered another setback six months into her rehab. It was discovered she had suffered an LCL tear. She returned to the court with a solid junior campaign, earning first team all United Kansas Conference, second team all Shawnee County honoree. She averaged 12.5 points, 8.3 rebounds, and two steals as a senior. Emery Doby, Shawnee Heights. From Silver Lake, Mariah Farmer. She was a four-year basketball letterman, made three appearances in the 3A state tournament, helping the Eagles post third and fourth place finishes. Mariah has displayed resilience throughout her school career, said Kyle Porter, a coach. Prior to her senior season, she suffered a stress fracture that sidelined her for most of the summer and end of the fall sports. Uh, through this challenge, she displayed perseverance and mental toughness as she made her way back onto the court. She was also a cross-country and track and field standout for the Eagles, Mariah Farmer from Silver Lake. <laughs> from Washburn Rural, Maddie Carter, cross-country and track and field. Carter, a multi-sport 6A state medalist in cross-country and track and field. Like all of this year's seniors, Maddie lost her freshman spring season to COVID. Russell, or uh, rural cross country coach Matt Sweetland said, the social isolation that came with the pandemic was a challenge, but what proved to be more challenging was returning to normal school after life, or after uh, school return. At its worst, the anxiety was making it difficult for her to get out of the house. She was fighting an internal battle every day, and despite doing a decent job of hiding it from her coaches and teachers, she was becoming mentally and emotionally exhausted day after day, week after week, until she fought back. She was strong and put in the work to meet her mental health needs as well as, as, well as her physical health needs. Washburn Rural, Maddie Carter. And our most inspirational female athlete is Alyssa Drogi. I mean, you know, one ACL, I mean, pfft, that's nothing, right? Uh, three ACL tears, are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, tell me, uh, how was that mentally? Um, it's, you think you hit one, it's gonna stop, and then it kinda keeps going, you're like, is this ever gonna end? But, just gotta get through it, I guess. So, last summer at this time, you find out you have a meniscus tear and a slight ACL, and then, okay, so what's your mental approach, as you know you're approaching senior year? Uh, I was very bummed out, but I was really just happy to know I'd be fine by softball season. Well, tremendous battle. I mean, certainly an inspiration to your teammates, to your school classmates. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Now to our inspirational males. From Hayden High School, Jake Muller in track and field. He was a rare four-sport athlete for the Wildcats, earning all city, all Shawnee County recognition in all four sports he participated in. Four career Class 4A state championships in track. He was an exceptional in his attitude and willingness to help others. Uh, this nomination form stated from his coaching staff and his teachers. He was a true leader and encouraged those around him to work hard. His positive attitude and demeanor on and off the field and court was an example to the younger athletes. He will run track and field right here at Washburn. Hayden's Jake Muller. Nick Friedland from Shawnee Heights. He was a standout football and wrestler for the T-Birds. He had a fantastic football season at quarterback, said Jason Swift. He got there uh, by his hard work and commitment and mental toughness. He attended 101 football opportunities in the summer where the average player made 62. The 101 is a new record. He had a big game leading the T-Birds to a victory over Lansing in the playoffs, plus big wins versus Seaman, Baser, Linwood, Topeka West, and Lansing for a second time. Uh, Freeland is a first team All Shawnee County honoree in wrestling and All County honorable mention in football. He will wrestle collegiately at Hastings College in Nebraska. Shawnee Heights, Nick Freeland. 
Mason Brokaw from Silver Lake. He ran varsity cross country and track and field. He was a key contributor. Some very good teams uh, all years of his time at Silver Lake, said head coach Kevin Brokaw. He has grown into a leader of the team and always led by example. As a senior, he decided to double in football as well as cross country after not playing football since sixth grade. He was a varsity letter winner in both fall sports, uh, a great teammate in every sport that he played. Uh, all four years in high school, was a state cross country medalist as a freshman and a state medalist in track as a sophomore and a junior. From Silver Lake, Mason Brokaw. <laughs> From Topeka West, Lenny Neroja in cross country, soccer, and track. Lenny uh, ended his high school career as a multi-time 5A state medalist, both cross country and track, bouncing back from a serious leg injury as a sophomore to finish fourth in cross country, second at the uh, fourth place state finishes in track. Uh, Lenny broke both bones, his tibia and fibula, in his lower leg during his sophomore year playing club soccer. Topeka West cross country track coach Donnie Palmer talked about him. He said he would go through rehab for seven to eight months and before he could return to running, uh, he came back stronger and faster. He continued to work hard and last summer in preparation for his senior year, uh, again, he, he just did everything that was asked of him. Lenny's a true inspiration. He'll run collegiately, cross country and track at KU, Lenny Neroja. And our most inspirational male athlete is Lenny Neroja. Come on up, Lenny. Man, tibia and fibula. I mean, you, were you just going for the daily double? Uh, uh, they just had to add an extra one. But uh, I just want to say thank you. But the girls that were just here before me, man, you guys are strong. I had one major injury. So you guys had, what, three? <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much for this. Uh, but strong. Strong. Obviously, uh, when you're a runner, having a, any kind of an injury to your lower extremities is not, not good, and it takes a long time to battle back. What kind of mental attitude did you have to take to, to battle back? Uh, it, took, it, took, it took a lot, but I had my coaches and my dad there with me. They really pushed me day in. I had the 7 a.m. Uh, rehab, and uh, those really sucked, uh, swollen knees, swollen ankle. <laughs> So, but at my coaches, Coach Palmer and Schnack, are those, they're the guys that really pushed me to come strong. I love it. Tell like it is. Going to KU and, and running for the Jayhawks. Rock Chalk, yeah, it's going to be fun. What does it mean to be able to go to KU and run? Oh, yeah, this, it's a dream come true. Never really thought I was going to go Division One as a, as a migrant from Kenya. So, this is a really special one for my family and uh, the coaches at Speak OS and the staff. So, I'm really proud to be a Jayhawk. Lenny, congratulations. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you got up. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we have one final award to hand out tonight, and that is to our overall female and male athletes of the year. Uh, and if you look at the number of folks who have won these awards and the accomplishments they've had beyond uh, their time right here in Topeka and Shawnee County, it is tremendous. And we expect this year to be no different. Our female overall athlete of the year is from Washburn Rural, Brooklyn DeLay. <laughs> Kevin Borderwick will come up and represent her. And Kevin, uh, I guess third time on the stage tonight. Congratulations. Um, but. What do, you, what do you think this means to Brooklyn? Not, I mean, she obviously won, you know, the fall, but now she wins the overall. And obviously the honorees, you know, many of them, uh, some of them even sitting at your table have been, uh, you know, through this experience. What do you think it means to her? Well, I think she's very grateful, uh, but she's a very humble kid. And she would thank her teammates and her club coaches, her high school coaches. She would uh, congratulate every one of them that helped her on this journey to get this award. What do you see for her at Kentucky in volleyball? She's going to be great. Uh, her ceiling's still really high, and, and we're, we're not that we expect it, but she'll get it done because she's got an incredible work ethic. Well, congratulations to her. Thanks for accepting the award on her behalf here tonight. Thank you. And our overall male athlete of the year is... Trey Richardson from Highland Park. We represented by Kawanda. Come on up, Kawanda.
His mom is with us tonight. Trey couldn't be with us. He'll play football collegiately at Hutchinson Community College. Uh, again, a multiple sport career at uh, Highland Park, winning a pair of state titles, adding a second and fourth place finish. That was all in track and field, um, outscoring 22 other 5A schools by himself in track and field. I mean, if that doesn't say anything about intestinal fortitude, I don't know what does. Uh, when he can look up at scoreboards and say, that's my total, and you guys had multiple people here. So, Kawanda, if you would please uh, come up here. We'll just want to talk to you real quick. Um, obviously, I know you're, you're very proud, but what, do you, what, what does this honor mean to you as a mom? All the early mornings, the late nights, the struggling, just, just to make sure he gets it. And it, it obviously paid off, so I just want to thank everybody that voted for him. And just know he's at school and he's working hard, steady doing what he does. Uh, and what about, uh, I mean, I, I know, again, he's going to go play football, but he outscores all these teams in track and field by himself. I mean, that was a heck of an effort. Yeah, he was a little hurt because he wanted first in the 200, but he hurt himself in the long jump. So, you know, I think he could have placed third or so by himself. <laughs> then he would have beat just even more teams, right? Exactly. Hey, congratulations to him. Thank congratulations you. to you. Thank you. Thank you. Trey Richardson, our overall male athlete of the year. Well, as we wrap up the night, we want to ask all of our Hall of Famers, all of our student athletes, and the winners especially, too, to meet right over here for pictures uh, for TopSports.News. By the way, is your uh, grandchild up for an NIL with TopSports.News? I mean, come on, Bill. you got to start writing some checks now. we got, we got kids to pay for. Uh, you know, folks, sports is not everything, but, you know, I think what you witness tonight, whether it's bowling or basketball or coaching or sports writing, sports melds us together. I mean, just look around the room and all of the personalities and backgrounds that have come together to be here tonight. And that's what sports is. That's what sports does. Sports allows us to work together to accomplish common goals. And, and while, you know, again, there's a lot going on in the world, uh, more times that like this tonight, this is meaningful because we get together to come together to celebrate not only the present, but the past and the future. Um, one last thing I would like to do. If you're the parent of one of our high school student athletes tonight, would you please stand? Because I want to recognize all the parents that made it tonight to represent their student athletes. All the parents in the room know exactly the sacrifices you went through. Uh, we thank again our four Hall of Famers. Welcome into the Topeka Shawnee County Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you again to Top Sports News, Bill and Rick Yeoman's effort. Have a great night. Thank you so much, and go Topeka. Again, Hall of Famers and all high school honorees, please come up over here for.